Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. To the final game of the 1964 World Series of Baseball from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. This series is brought to you by <laughs> Chrysler Corporation, makers of the new 1965 Plymouth, Dodge, Dodge Trucks, Chrysler, and Imperial. Today, your host is Dodge. And by Gillette, maker of the incomparable Gillette stainless steel blade, the world's sharpest, easiest shaving, number one in sales by far, and the slim adjustable razor, foamy shaving cream, light guard deodorant, and sun-up aftershave. And for your listening pleasure, Chrysler Corporation and Gillette will also bring you on NBC Radio the 1965 Rose Bowl game. In this way, these companies wish to thank you for your support. A beautiful day for baseball here in St. Louis. The seventh game of the 1964 World Series. And the ball players put it best when they say, we played all season, and now today the season really opens. The Yankees, who clinched the American League pennant the day before the season ended, the Cardinals, who clinched it on the last day, now battle here in the seventh game. And it'll be Bob Gibson pitching for the Cardinals. Gibson is warming up down in the left field bullpen. And for the Yankees, Mel Stottlemyre will be the pitcher. Gibson against Stottlemyre on a perfect afternoon for baseball. The big news here at the ballpark, of course, the game itself, but Whitey Ford. Ford had a little bit of a press conference, so to speak. They finally announced that Whitey Ford has a sore arm. I talked to Dr. Gaynor, who is a team physician for the New York Yankees, and Dr. Gaynor did not seem alarmed. He said it's a condition he's had for four or five years. Uh, It's a circulatory problem, and when the series is all over, we'll sit down, go over thoroughly, and then make a decision. So it hasn't been a heel, it hasn't been a strawberry, it's been a sore arm that's kept Whitey Ford uh, out of the World Series uh, as regular as we are used to seeing him. Whitey had quite a uh, line in the clubhouse after the game when, of course, the Yankees very happy to tie it up, going to the seventh game. As Whitey Ford was shaving, he looked over at Coach Jim Gleason, and he said, Jim, here it is, the final game coming up. He said, did you think it would be like this when we went to spring training down in Hollywood, Florida, about six years ago? Just about how long it seems the way they've been battling both these ball clubs. The clubs are very loose during batting practice. Uh, You didn't really feel a whole lot of tension. If there is any tension, they hit it pretty well. Johnny Keane of the St. Louis Cardinals, the manager, he puts it very simply. He says, we're ready. We're happy to be here. Yogi, as only Yogi can say it, he says, we're ready. We're real happy to be here. And at least we all know that we're going to go home after the game today. So that's how excited Yogi was about it. Gibson, the pitcher for the Cardinals, warming up right now, is sore all over is about the best way he explains it. He was hit with a line drive in the last game he pitched, and of course he's one of those guys who puts a lot of effort into his delivery. And if you remember in the first game that he pitched here in St. Louis, he relied heavily on a fastball, worked very quickly. In the second game at Yankee Stadium, he started off with the curveball and then went to a fastball and racked up a lot of strikeouts. He certainly is within range and probably will break Sandy Koufax's total strikeout record in World Series. Uh, Gibson has 23. 22, Koufax has 23. And if Gibson is any kind of stuff at all, you certainly expect him to strike out more than two or three. Stottlemyre, the youngster with the good sinker ball, and Yogi, he is the 
boy that Yogi wanted to pitch uh, all along here at uh, Bush Stadium. The right field foul line is 310 feet. The slot is 354 in right center. Dead center field, 425. Left center, 379. And down the line in left field, 351. So with Stottlemyre pitching, Yogi feels that he keeps that ball down. And home runs are a big factor in this ballpark. And you need that fellow who can throw the sinker ball. And Stottlemyre certainly has that. The seventh game of the 1964 World Series, Bob Gibson against Mel Stottlemyre. Now, this final World Series game is being brought to you from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The cars are out. The results are in. Now you can see them. Now you can make your choice of the new 1965 automobiles. One of the best choices of all. New Dodge Coronet coming on big for 65. New Dodge Coronet. Hot new Dodge at a new lower price. How hot? Bring along your stopwatch and find out. How low priced? Bring along your fair lane and Chevelle price lists and find out. New Dodge Coronet with big Dodge look and ride and feel. The kind of action and power that just naturally go with Dodge. How about styling? Every single Coronet line is clean, bold, beautiful. Drive new Dodge Coronet. Coming on big for 65 at your Dodge dealers now. Home runs have been a big factor throughout this series. The Cardinals won the first game 9-5. to five. The second one was won by New York 8-3. to three. And then the third game won by Mickey Mantle's dramatic bottom of the ninth home run. 2-1 to one, the Yankees won that one. Fourth game, 4-3, four to three, the Cardinals won it, a grand slammer by Ken Boyer. Fifth game won by St. Louis. McCarver hit a big home run. The sixth game yesterday, it was home runs by Maris and by Mantle. 8-3 to three was the score. When ball players come out to a ballpark, they kind of take their own weather report. You can say what the temperature is, and you can talk about the slight breeze, but they look at the flag to see who it's going to help. And right now, she's blown in, and it isn't going to help anybody. It'll help the pitchers, if anything, although the breeze is not that stiff. The grass in the infield is a bit high. It is not fast as the grass when you start to describe it, although the infield is hard. In the outfield, you can look for some bad hops because from the stands it looks very smooth, but there are little clumps of grass, and if the ball should happen to hit one of these clumps, it will not take a true hop. Boy, all the outfielders during batting practice were out checking that. Here are the lineups for the New York Yankees leading off and playing shortstop. It'll be Phil Lins. Lins at shortstop. Batting second, it'll be Bobby Richardson at second base. Richardson, second base. Batting third, Maris, Roger Maris. He'll be in center field. Batting fourth, Mantle, Mickey Mantle in right field. Batting fifth, the catcher, Alston Howard. Howard, the catcher. Batting sixth, Joe Pepitone at first base. Pepitone, first base. Batting seventh, the left fielder, Tom Tresh. Tresh, left field. Batting eighth, it'll be Cleet Boyer. Boyer, third base. And batting ninth will be the pitcher, Stottlemyre, Mel Stottlemyre. For the St. Louis Cardinals, batting first will be the center fielder, Kurt Flood. Flood, center field. Batting second will be the left fielder, Lou Brock. Brock, left field. Batting third, the first baseman, Bill White. White at first base. Batting fourth, it'll be Ken Boyer, the third baseman. Boyer, third base. Batting fifth, the shortstop, Dick Grote. Grote at shortstop. Batting sixth, the catcher, Tim McCarver. McCarver, the catcher. Batting seventh will be the right fielder, Mike Shannon. Shannon, right field. And batting eighth will be the shortstop, uh, second baseman, Maxville, Del Maxville, at second base. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Bob Gibson. Started to call Maxville a shortstop and can't help but think about Julian Javier and Tony Kubek, who are out of the World Series. In fact, Kubek uh, taking a lot of ribbon. He is uh, sitting on the Yankee bench in his street clothes. 
and they're all asking him if the brown suit that he's wearing is his road uniform. Kubek replaced on the roster by young Mike Egan. Linz has been doing such a great job at shortstop for the Yankees, and Del Maxville filling in for the injured Julian Javier. It's always a big disappointment for a ball player to battle as hard and as long as ball players on both these clubs have battled and not be able to appear in a World Series. The umpires are walking out towards home plate, and this is the same crew that umpired. They'll be in the exact positions, the same crew that umpired the first game with Frank Sicori behind the plate. One of the great things about the rotation, everybody has moved around. They have different positions to work, but the series going seven games, they now all come back to the original positions, and Frank Sicori will be the umpire behind the plate. There is no tomorrow. This is it. And it'll be Bob Gibson and the Cardinal pitching staff against Mel Stottlemyre and the Yankee pitching staff. They will use everybody. Because if you don't pitch today, you'll be going next with about 92 days rest. The seventh game. But the ball players were just amazing as they took batting practice. No real sign of any pressure. They just were popping the ball on the roof. The Yankees, of course, very happy to have that short right field fence. Cardinals, this is the home park, so it was really nothing new to them. Bob Gibson continuing to throw down in the left field corner, and Stottlemyre throwing in the right field corner. Gibson throws very hard. A great fastball, slider, and a curveball. No trick pitches. Anytime he throws a change of pace... Uh, it's a little bit of uh, under the uh, heading of news because he doesn't change speeds at all. If anything at all, he'll shift into a higher gear and really flip it up there. Stottlemyre, Johnny Keane made quite an observation when I asked him uh, if the book that the Cardinals had on the Yankees, if it was as accurate as he thought it would be or were there any surprises. And he said that Stottlemyre, they knew he was a real good sinker ball pitcher, but they didn't know that he had as good a curveball that he has. If you remember in the game that Stottlemyre pitched, his last one out, he had a real good curveball and was getting a lot of strikeouts with it as it appeared the Cardinal hitters were looking for the sinker ball. The huddle breaks up around home plate. The color guard standing in the center field. The national anthem will be sung and probably the first time in World Series history that I can remember will be sung by the wife of a well, a Cardinal coach now and farmer Redbird, Mrs. Red Shandine. So the national anthem will be sung by Mrs. Red Shandines, who is the president of the Pinch Hitters Club, to sing our national anthem on behalf of all the wives of the Cardinal players. Mrs. Red Shandines. Anthem. <laughs> Right. 
Dallas, 10 seconds for station identification. With winter approaching, one name stands for reliability and heating, AFCO, the American Furnace Company. Call them Mission 7 1300. KMOX, KMOX FM, St. Louis, your World Series station. The seventh game of the 1964 World Series. Here it is, and to bring you the play-by-play, here he is, Bill Rizzuto. Thank you, Joe. And Mrs. Shane Deans really did a beautiful job on that Star Spangled Banner, Joe. She sure did, Phil. And that Pinch Hitters is a group to do a lot of charitable work around St. Louis. And I know they're awfully proud of her. And she did a great job. She really did. And out on the mound right now, Big Bob Gibson making his third appearance in this World Series. He's pitched in two ball games. He has won one and lost one. He's pitched a total of 18 innings. Allowed 14 hits and four earned runs. He struck out 22, as Joe told you. Has made one wild pitch, and he has hit two batters. So the big right-hander with only two days rest, same way with Mel Stottlemyre, who's loosening up down in the Yankee bullpen. Both pitches going with just two days rest, but every other pitcher on both teams available, with the exception of Whitey Ford. Again, as Joe told you, Whitey came up with a sore arm, and the Yankees have kept that a pretty good secret. Down the coaching line at third base, Frank Crosetti. And at first base, Jimmy Gleason for the Yankees. And this exciting seventh game of the World Series, just about ready to start as Phil Lynn steps into the batter's box. Lynn's batting 192 on the series, has had five hits and 26 at-bats. Ready for the first pitch of the ball game. And it's taken, strike one called, and a curveball on the first pitch by Bob Gibson. On deck, Bobby Richardson. Gibson kicks, delivers a fastball right in there. Strike two call. Two quick strikes on the Yankee leadoff header. So Linz now wants to slow Gibson down a little bit. Steps out, gets a little dirt. Back in the batter's box. Outfield straight away, not too deep on Linz. Here's the two-strike pitch. Check swing foul back into the crowd. He almost got the fastball by Linz. And it looked like Phil might have been looking for a breaking pitch there. Sun shining brightly here in St. Louis. Temperature at game time in the middle 70s. Again, the two-strike pitch. A broken back grounder to third. Ken Boyer on the big hop. Fires to first. One away. As Bill White really switched positions beautifully there, taking that throw on the inside part of the bag. That will bring up Bobby Richardson. Bobby, batting 407, has 11 hits in 27 at-bats. He has more hits than any other player on either team in this series. Needs one more to tie a World Series record. <clears throat> Gibson's first pitch inside corner. Strike one call. That Gibson throwing nothing but strikes. And, of course, that's a good idea when your arm might be a little tired. Don't waste too many. Back with the next pitch. A foul down the right field line, and Richardson just trying to punch that ball. Bobby, a tough man, a fool at the plate. Strikes out very seldom. Gets even fewer walks, because he's up there swinging. Now the two-strike pitch. Curveball, strike three. He got him. I tell you, Gibson has thrown seven pitches, all of them strikes. There are two away. And, Joe, you were talking about a strikeout record, and uh, what do you do there? (laughs) He ties it. He tied it right there. Phil, I'm sure it's like you said a minute ago. Just go as hard as long as you can. Don't waste any, because they can come in with a whole staff. All right, Joe, here's Roger Maris batting 192. Gibson's pitch, a ground ball to second base, a big hop and a max, though. Over to first... And it's three up and three down for the Yankees. And at the middle of the first inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Cardinals nothing. This is it. That special time of year when automotive show windows promise great new cars inside. That promise pays off for you in a big way when you step in to see the new Dodge Polara coming on big for 65. One long look tells you. Here's a beautiful way to leave the low-priced field. A close-up look 
And you know Polaro's a big car, even before you take it out on the road. And when you do, Polaro says it all. Power, Polaro takes a back seat to no one. Room, stretch out. Response, Polaro's all go, all young, all Dodge. New Dodge Polaro, going places fast. Find out fast. Slide behind the wheel of new Dodge Polaro, coming on big for 65. Drive it at your Dodge dealers. On the mound for the New York Yankees, Mel Stottlemyre. Mel, in his third ball game, he's pitched a total of 16 innings, given up 13 hits and four earned runs. He has not allowed any homers, has walked four and struck out ten. And the first batter for the Cardinals, Kurt Flood, hitting 246 for 25. Poaching at third, Vern Benson for the Cardinals, and at first, Joe Schultz. Boyer moves into third base, right-hand hitting Kurt Flood. As Stottlemyre delivers his first pitch, and it's taken low, ball one. That's the first ball of the ball game that Gibson threw nothing but strikes in the first inning. Yankee outfield straight away on Flood. Next pitch, low ball two. Elston Howard rubbing up the ball now, walking out towards the mound before firing it back to Stottlemyre. On deck, Lou Brock. No ball game could be bigger than this one. Every pitch means so much. The 2 nothing delivery. Taken strike one call. Two balls and a strike. No score. We're in the bottom of the first inning here at St. Louis, Missouri. Couldn't ask for better weather for this final game. Stottlemyre's next pitch, swing, ground ball, foul, just outside of first. And Kurt Flood just missed coming up with an extra base hit on an inside fastball. Swinging late, just bounced one outside the bag. Waiting now as the ball is being thrown in from the outfield. Bell Stottlemyre in his first year in the big leagues. A lot of poise, a lot of confidence out on the mound. Gets the sign from Elston Howard. Here's his 2-2 delivery. A curve outside, and it's a full count. Three and two. Cardinals with a very dangerous 1-2 punch. Flood and Brock. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and another foul down the right field line. This one back into the crowd, out of play. Frank Sicori, plate umpire, dusting off home plate. Boya has moved back at third base with a full count on Kurt Flood. Again, the pitch. Ground ball, high hopper. Boya backs up, grabs it one hand at the long throw. Just in time on a long stretch by Pepitone, and it's one out. You cannot hold that ball even a fraction of a second longer than you have to with these Cardinal runners. And here is Lou Brock. Brock hitting 269, 7 for 26. I'll show you how loose this kid was. He was making jokes. He gave Pepitone a message to give Stottlemyre, Phil. The first pitch, he bunts. Close to the mound. Oh, Stottlemyre up throws to first. They just did get him. Any place but back to the pitcher, he'd have a base set. He told Pepitone, he says, ask Stottlemyre if he knows today's weather forecast. And he said, what is it? He said, early shower. Oh, pretty clever. All right, here is Bill White, who has had a rough series, but the Cardinal fans are behind him. He has had just one hit in 23 at-bats, batting 0-4-3. And if anybody is due in this series, it is Bill White. Two out, nobody on. The pitch to White is a curve high. Ball one. No score in the bottom of the first inning. The wind a very little factor in today's ball game. Left hand hitting Bill White. Ready? The curve is hit to straightaway center field. We're back. 
That one is over. Maris is dead off the center field wall. And White is going into second base with a stand-up double. And Joe, that has to be one of the hardest hit balls in this series. It didn't get up or down. It just got out there. Maris didn't have a chance, and he played that carom perfectly. And White, I tell you one thing about him, he hasn't been getting the base hits, but he's been swinging, Phil. He certainly has, Joe. And that ball took one short hop and hit the straightaway center field wall 425 feet away. A double for White. And here is Kenny Boyer. Boyer hitting 130 is 3 for 23 in this series. Cardinals have the first base runner in the seventh game of the World Series on at second base with two out in the bottom of the first inning. Donald pitching from a stretch position now to Kenny Boyer. He sets his pitch is a curve in there, strike one call. On deck, Dick Rope. stands deep in that box, waves the bat around. Fastball is in there. Strike two call. You know, you got to get used to these umpires, Joe. They're real good, but some of them wait just a little longer to give the sign. I think uh, Frank Sicori patterned himself after the uh, late and great Larry Getz. He was uh, deliberate right on top of it and was really absolutely sure. I think it's great. But you don't want to make any snap judgments that uh, might cause the ball game. All right, ready now for the two-strike pitch. He checked his swing on a low outside curve. One ball, two strikes. Meyer almost got him fishing for that curve ball. Bill White out at second base with two out. Young right-hander looks in for the sign. Glove on his knee, ball in back of him. Now he stretches. Delivers a curve. Strike three. Got him on a good curveball. Nothing across for the Cardinals. And at the end of the first inning, the score are the Yankees. Nothing in the Cardinals. Nothing. Something big has happened in the automotive world. If you know cars, you know what I mean. The introduction of a great new series of automobiles from Dodge. All coming on big for 65. Take new Dodge Dart. We call it a compact. Coming from Dodge, that's saying plenty. You see, Dart's the Dodge size compact. More space, more spunk, less spending. New Dodge Coronet. Hot new Dodge at a new lower price. How much lower? Considering Coronet's big size, you're in for a big surprise. New Dodge Polara, the big one from Dodge. Big and beautiful, big and brawny, all new, all Dodge with power plus luxury. See them all, new from Dodge, coming on big for 65 at your Dodge dealers now. Mickey Mantle to lead it off for the Yankees. Here in the top of the second of the scoreless ball game, Bob Gibson threw only six warm-up pitches that time. He's saving his arm. First pitch to Mickey. A curve. A little low. Ball one. First ball that Gibson has thrown in the ball game. Mick batting 350 has had seven hits and 20 at bats. Gibson's next pitch. Fast ball on the outside corner. One and one. On deck, Elston Howard with Joe Pepitone to follow. One-one delivery. On the outside corner again. One ball, two strikes. Gibson said when he pitched to Madeline, New York, he tried to throw the fastball or everything away from Mickey, knowing that Mickey was having trouble reaching that outside pitch with that bad knee of his. Here's the windup. Fastball a little low. The count is even at two and two. Yankee hitters are trying to slow Gibson down just a little bit, stepping out of the box between pitches. 2-2 delivery is a curse. Strike three. And they're 
was a record that Mr. Gibson has just broken, as Joe Garagiola told you. He needed one strikeout to tie uh, Koufax's record for the most strikeouts in a series, and two to beat it, and that's his second strikeout of the ball game. Here's Elston Howard. Ellie batting an even 300, six for 20. One out, no one on. Pitch to Howard, a curve, a little low, ball one. Kurt Flood deep in center field. Gibson's pitch is a curve in there, strike call, one on one. Gibson, a real fine, superbly trained athlete. Real great shape. His pitch curve long away. Two balls and a strike. One out, nobody on. Gibson kicks to live as a ground ball in the hole through. A base hit to left field. The first Yankee base hit and the first Yankee base runner in this final game. Howard grounds a single just to the right of Dick Grote. Brings up Joe Pepitone. <laughs> and listen to the crowd reaction. And Pepitone gets a big kick out of this. <laughs> Doesn't bother Joe a bit. He's hitting 182, 4 for 22, but had the big grand slammer yesterday. Pitch to Joe. He checks his swing. It's over strike ball. He said in the clubhouse uh, yesterday, he said, every park I play in, my fan club has to have a meeting. <laughs> Joe Pepitone, left-hand batter, ready, the pitch, swing and a miss, strike two, and Gibson trying to pitch away from the left-hand power hitter of the Yankees, got that one on the outside part of the plate, on deck, Tommy Tresh, no score in the top of the second, one out, Elston Howard at first base, Bill White is playing in back of Howard, about three steps, stretched by Gibson, Delivers a foul back in the upper deck. <laughs> Kurt Flood has moved a little bit over in right center field on Joe Pepitone. Gibson gets the sign. Howard leading away at first. Curve popped in the air alongside third. Kenny Boyle with the glasses down in foul territory is there. He's got it. And that's two away, and it brings up Tresh. Tommy, batting 250, is 5 for 20 in this series. Tresh, though, with seven RBIs, leads both clubs in that department. Tresh had that dramatic ninth inning home run with two out to tie up the ball game against Gibson. The curve is outside ball one. And that was a game in which Tim McCarver came up in the tenth inning to hit a three-run homer. Howard at first with two out. Gibson's changeup curve is in there. Strike one. And boy, Tommy Tresh flinched three different times there. He had taken a stride and tried to uh, bring the bat back. Couldn't do it. A 1-1 count. Beautiful motion by uh, Gibson on that one. He doesn't throw too many of them, and that's why it's such a big surprise to the hitter when he does throw one. Fastball, foul back. One ball, two strikes. And, of course, after you throw that changeup and then fire your good high hard one, it looks that much faster to the hitter. Now Gibson is ahead of Tresh. Goes into the set position. His pitch, line drive, out to left field. Base hit, blocked by Lou Brock. And how it started goes back. The throw comes over Maxfield's head, but not too far. Rode gave that ball a good try, but Tommy Tresh going to the opposite field got good wood on it just over his glove. Fellows outfielders are making sure they're getting in front of that ball because those little clumps of grass uh, give it that bad hop. You won't see, I would venture to say that most of the balls uh, will, will not be fielded cleanly because you're going to have to knock it down. Base runners take that extra step and outfielders make sure they get down. And Joe was explaining that to you fans before the game started and you could see Block 
Brock get down on both knees to block that with his chest or any part of his body. All right, here's Cleet Boyer. He run us at first and second. Two out, no score. Boyer hitting an even 200, four for 20. Gibson's curve is a little low, ball one. Howard at second, Tresh at first. Gibson checks Howard at second. Delivers, it's a curve, low ball two, two and nothing. On deck is Mel Stottlemyre, and even though there is not a base open, Gibson can afford to pitch very carefully to Cleet Boyer. Runners leading off first and second. Gibson shook off one sign. Now he's got the one he likes. His pitch is a curve, and that one's in there. Two balls, one strike. Nobody throws that fastball anymore when they're behind. The big right-hander sets. His pitch is a swing and a miss strike, too, and he plays that one in there. I mean to tell you, he fired it right in on Boyer's fist. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and two on here in the top of the second. No score. So Bob Gibson, even with only two days rest, can reach back for that little extra. He started a stretch, then stepped back off the rubber. Checks the sign again with McCarver. He's ready. His pitch, check swing, ground ball foul. It hit Boyer in the batter's box. Boyer picked it up, flipped it to McCarver. McCarver didn't give the umpire much time to look at that ball. He wanted to give it right back to Gibson. Oh, Took it right out of Zagori's head, didn't he? You get a little edge. Uh, you get a little spot on there. You want to try to get it out of that pitch as soon as you can. And Tim looked like a pickpocket on that one, didn't he? <laughs> a 2 2 count on Cleet Boyer. Gibson working a little slower here, in a little bit of a jam with runners at first and second. He's nodding his head, but continues to look in for the sign. Taking a long time. Now he steps on the rubber. Checks Howard. His pitch, a ground ball is short. Grote to his right, bobbles it, picks it up, can't make a play. All hands are safe. Dick Grote reached three times for that ball. And when he reached the first time, he took his eye off the ball to look and see if the second baseman were at second. And couldn't quite locate it. It's an error charge to Dick Grote, and the bases are loaded. And it brings up Mel Stottlemyre. Mel has had one hit in seven at-bats, batting 143. And again, this fast infield is quite a factor in this ball game. Ball has only hit a step or two to Groats right, but he had trouble getting over there. All right, here's the windup. Pitch to Stottlemyre. Swing and a miss, strike one. Way out in front of a good slider thrown by Gibson. Boyer at first. Tresh at second. Howard at third with two out. Gibson quickly into the windup. His pitch, swing and a miss, set another slide to strike two. Quickly ahead of Stottlemyre. On deck, Phil ends. Gibson is ready. Strike three, swinging. That's the third strikeout for Gibson and a mighty big one. And at the middle of the second inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Cardinals nothing. I'd like to ask Joe Garagiola a question. Joe, when Stottlemyre struck out, McCarver dropped the ball, and yet Stottlemyre did not run to first base. It was a, a real good play. So what he did, uh, he just tagged home plate and told the umpire, which was a force out really on Howard. But when you do that, you better alert the umpire uh, just for, uh, you know, safety. And that's the first time I ever saw that play. Well, it saves you from throwing a ball at first base. He just tagged home plate and says uh, it's a force out because you can run with uh, two outs. I saw that happen one time where uh, umpire just didn't see the play and uh, said I didn't see you tag home plate and everybody was safe. Well, you learn something every day. And right now, here is Dick Grote leading off. Grote batting 217, 5 for 23. Stottlemyre's first pitch is taken low and inside. Ball one. On deck, Tim McCarver. No score, bottom of the second. Stottlemyre's pitch, ground ball. Papadono is right, has it. Flips to Stottlemyre in time. 
And Pepitone was shading Grote over in the hole between first and second, knowing that Dick hits there quite often. And here is the red-hot Tim McCarver. Just one step further uh, on that play, Phil, it just shows you how cool this youngster is. Everybody's waiting for him to throw it, and he just made the easy play by tapping home plate and walking off. He picks things up in a hurry. McCarver picking up a lot of base hits here in this series. 476, 10 for 21. A left-hand batter takes the strike right down the middle. On deck, Mike Shannon. Boyer is in on the edge of the infield grass. McCarver beat out an infield hit yesterday, hitting it between Boyer and Linz. The pitch is a curve. It's just outside. Ball one, one on one. Scott Meyer taking a little extra time. Nobody in a hurry. A long winter ahead for both teams. The one one pitch foul back. McCarver trying to slice that ball to left field. One ball, two strikes. Another capacity crowd on hand today. Here's the one ball, two strike delivery. A curve line foul down the left field line. And boy, that McCarver went with that outside curveball. Still one ball, two strikes. One out, nobody on. Stottlemyre gets the sign from Howard. Short windup. Curve, this one high and outside, and that evens it up at two and two. Perfect weather for this final game of the World Series. Now the 2-2 delivery is high and away, and it's ball three. A full count. Three and two. Stoudemire back to the rosin bag. Takes his glove off, rubs up the ball. Now he's ready on the pitching rubber. Here's the payoff pitch to McCarver. Way outside. That ball missed by two feet. And there is the first walk of the ball game for either pitcher. McCarver at first. And here is Mike Shannon. Shannon batting 208, 5 for 24. On deck, Dal Maxville. Pepitone moves over to hold first against McCarver. With one out, no score in the bottom of the second. The stretch by Stottlemyre. His pitch is over as Shannon started to swing and then held up. Strike one. Shannon stepped back to take a quick look at third base coach Vern Benson. Carver leads away at first. Here's the stretch. Pitch foul in back of the plate. Right back to one of the fans in the first row of box seats. Nothing in two, the count. Now Stottlemyre leans in to get the sign. He sets... Delivers a curve strike, three swinging, and boy, he had Shannon way out in front of that pitch. Strikeout number two for Mel Stottlemyre brings up Dal Maxville. Maxville batting 177. He's three for 17. Right hand batter. On deck, Bob Gibson. Pitch to Maxville is a curve right in there. Strike one call. No score here in the bottom of the second inning. A 
Car, but not too big a lead at first base. Stottlemyre checks him. Kicks, delivers a curve, foul to the left of the plate, strike two. Fleet Boyer moves back at third base. The pitch is a curve hit in the air to left field. Tommy Trash moving in under it. He's there and he's got it. And now at the end of the second inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Cardinals nothing. We will be back on side two to continue the game. The top of the Yankee batting order up for their second look at Bob Gibson. Bill Lins, who bounced to third base his first time up, will lead it off. A nothing-nothing ball game. We're in the top of the third. The wind up by Gibson. Curve next to the outside corner. Strike one called. Gibson right back. Another curve. This one on the inside corner. Strike two. Quickly ahead of Phil Lins. All right, Gibson is ready. Kicks the curve. Hit foul. Frank Rossetti to his right. Nice play by the Crow. Wants to throw it back in for the umpire to look at. No balls, two strikes. Big Bob Gibson on the mound. Goes into the windup. Fastball high and away. One ball, two strikes. Again, Gibson ready. His pitch swing and a foul tip back to the screen. Count holes at one ball and two strikes. No score. Top of the third. Bobby Richardson on deck. Here's the pitch. Broken bat, ground ball, and boy has got it. The throw to first. Think he's safe at first base. Right through the ball of McCarver. Almost threw it in the Yankee dugout. What a play Kenny Boyer made. And Phil Lins, who threw his bat at the ball yesterday and uh, lined a single to left, broke his bat this time. The barrel started out at Kenny Boyer, and it's a wonder Boyer didn't go for the barrel of the bat. Boyer going way over to the shortstop position, coming up with that ball, rifling it to first. But first base umpire Bill McKinley called Lins safe at first. So it goes as an infield single. Bill White thought they had Lins by quite a bit, and... Uh, Turned around to flip the ball to McCarver so they could throw the ball around the infield. And he almost threw it over McCarver's head into the Yankee dugout. An infield single for Lynn. The third hit for the Yankees. Here's Bobby Richardson. Bobby struck out his first time at bat. Now Kenny Boyer moves in at third. Bill White holding first against Lynn's. They got to look for anything here. The stretch pitch to Bobby. Ground ball is short. Grote over to Maxville for one. Back to first. Double play. And I want to tell you, Joe, that Maxwell showed me something there because that Lynch was coming right into him. Yes, sir. Uh, Grote gave him a good ball to handle about eye high, but he didn't have enough time to get out of the way, and the kid just planted his feet, stayed there, and Lynch was right in on top of him, and it was a fine double play. And Lynch took Maxwell out of the play, but after Maxwell had thrown the ball, and that ball was not hit too hard, and Richardson can go down that line. So it's two quick outs, and here is Roger Maris. Maris bounced to second base his first time at bat. On deck, Mickey Mantle. Pitch to Maris. On the outside corner, strike one call. 
Gibson definitely keeping the ball away from the Yankee power. One strike delivery, a ground ball hit to the left side. Boya backs up, he's got it, throws in time to get Maris. Good play by Kenny Boya. And now at the middle of the third inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Cardinals nothing. When you hear the name Monaco, what do you think of? Well, starting now, you're going to think of a car, a great car from Dodge. Dodge Monaco. Coming on big for 65. Monaco. A new car, a new tradition, a new way to travel with all the best things you've come to expect from Dodge. Monaco. Where does it stand? Long and proud in the big new Dodge lineup for 65. Outside, Monaco is trim, sleek, young. Inside, Monaco is rich, roomy. Bucket seats, front and back. Console, front and back. Under the hood, Dodge power, Dodge efficiency. Monaco spirit. Test drive, new Dodge Monaco, coming on big for 65. Now, at your Dodge dealers. Bob Gibson will lead it off for the Cardinals. Bob taking off his warm-up jacket, and he'll get a fine hand here. What a competitor he is. Gibson is hitting 400 for the series, two for five. That's him right-handed. On deck, Kurt Flood. Stottlemyre's first pitch is a curve. He couldn't check his swing. It's strike one. That ball was about a foot outside, but looked like Gibson was guessing. Stottlemyre ready. Another curve. This one a little high. One and one. It's almost a sense you was guessing, Phil, but if you'd ask him, you'd say, were you guessing for a pitch? He says, no, I was looking for a fastball. <laughs> Nobody ever guesses. They all look. The 1-1 pitch hit high in the air to center field. Roger Maris flips the glasses down. She's going over to right center now, is there and makes the catch. And the wind did drift that ball. It's picked up a little since the start of the game. One way, and here is Kurt Flood. Flood bounced out to third base. His first time at bat. Did you guess or look? Uh, I guessed, Joe. But how about these guys who guess for a bad ball, get it, and still can't hit it? What's wrong with that? <laughs> the pitch to Flood inside, ball one. I like Hodges. That one year he said he didn't have a bad year hit, and he had a bad year guessing. <laughs> One nothing pitch, low and away, ball two. On deck, Lou Brock. One out, nobody on. Nothing, nothing ball game here in the bottom of the third inning. Stottlemyre's pitch, a ground foul outside of third, bouncing down the left field line. Boyer has a tough chore with the speedy Cardinal runners he's playing in, but when they chop a ball off this hard infield, many times it can bounce over the third baseman's head. The 2-1 delivery, inside and high, ball three, three and one. Young right-hander delivers. It's a foul back. Fastball was in on Flood. Inside corner. Full count. Three and two. Now a big pitch coming up to Kurt Flood. Meyer checks the sign. Here's the payoff pitch. 
Ground ball to third. Boya backhands it. The throw to first base in time, and they call it a fair ball. Floyd had stopped before he got to first. Boya had backhanded the ball, and uh, his momentum carried him over the foul line. And, Joe, on that play, before the ball gets to third base, check me if I'm wrong, it's the home plate umpire's call to call it fair or foul. It is, uh, and he looks at the third base umpire to kind of put the uh, seal on, and both umpires immediately called it a fair ball. Sikori called it a fair ball a minute Boyer grabbed it, and Hank Sawyer at third base indicated fair ball. Both of them right now. And that's what it is. Johnny Keene is out there now, along with both coaches for the Cardinals. Schultz and Benson, and now Benson is going out to talk with third base umpire Hank Soar. But now Johnny Keene runs down to talk with Hank Soar. Cleet Boyer getting in on the discussion. Cleet backhanded that ball, and his momentum carried him into foul territory. Johnny Keene gets the explanation from Hank Soar and goes quickly back in the dugout. What a job that Johnny Keene has done all year with these Cardinals. All right, here's Lou Brock. Trying to beat out a bunt. Bunted back to the mound. Was thrown out in the first inning. Two out. Nobody on. No score. Stottlemyre into the windup. His pitch is low ball one. Boya moves further in now with Brock up there. Next pitch is a curve. That's high. Ball two. Two and nothing. On deck, Bill White. The left hand hitting Lou Brock. Takes a pitch low and away. Ball three, a three and nothing. So Stottlemyre has walked only one man thus far. His control not quite as sharp as it was in his two other previous appearances. A 3 nothing pitch, right down the middle, strike call. The 3-1 pitch, swing, line drive, base hit to center field. Maris comes in, blocks the ball, Brock takes a big turn, and then comes back. I tell you, you give these Cardinals one inch, and they'll take that extra base. And keep in mind that Brock has the green light any time he wants to go. Johnny Keene has a don't go sign. And with two outs, you can bet that if he gets any kind of a jump at all, we're going to see a battle between Elston Howard and Lou Brock. And right now here is Bill White, who uh, hit one of the longest doubles we've ever seen. One bounce against the 425-foot sign in deep center field. Howard motion to Stottlemyre. Make him stop at first base. Make him come set. All right, Joe. Brock leads away, and he's got a good lead to throw there. They almost got him. Look at Pepitone stepping over Brock, having a little discussion with McKinley. He was trying to get that running jump, Joe. He gets that walking lead, I tell you, boys. He can go. And Stottlemyre, with that good move, made Doc Brock dive back into first. Here's the stretch. Another quick throw. This time, Brock jumps back in. Bill White now digging himself a little hole. Time is called at the plate. Of course, this is tough on a hitter when you've got a good runner at first. You never know when he gets set. One of the pitcher is coming to the plate. Here's the stretch. The pitch is low ball one, and Howard bounced out in front of the plate as Brock Bluff gone. That was one of the real good bluffs. He just didn't take one step. He was spinning those wheels, boy, like he was trying to get traction. So with two out, and no score here in the bottom of the third. Strike count on Bill White. Cardinal fans yelling for Brock to go. The stretch quick throw over there. Brock is back. And don't think Mel Stottlemyre is not aware of Brock's speed. Here's the stretch. The bluffs going. A swing and a miss. Strike one, one and one. On each pitch, you see Elston Howard jump out. Because remember, with a left-hand batter up there, Howard's vision... Is cut off quite a bit. He can't see that runner. I'll tell you, one ball and one strike. Brock's been getting the lead. And Howard pitched out just once, and he's aching for it. If Sotomayor's got any kind of control, this would be a good spot right here for the pitch out. 
All right, let's see what happens. Stottlemyre checking the sign. He sets. Quick throw over again to first base. Whenever you see a pitcher throw to first base, that shows there's no pitch out on because the catcher likes to see that fellow run. You don't want to hold him too close. Just stop him. <laughs> Brock wants to go. Now White steps out, and the yeah. play will have to start all over. They want to take a look at the ball, but Frank Sicori said it's fine. So we've got a little battle of wits going on right now. Brock leads off first. The stretch, the pitch, ground ball. Richardson is right there on the big hop, flips to Pepitone for the out. And now at the end of the third inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Right now we pause 30 seconds for station identification. Today, from years of experience and improvements, GFC makes it faster than ever to borrow the money you need. One fast, easy phone call to friendly Bob Adams is really all it takes to arrange your loan from GFC. Main 14242. The folks at GFC handle all the details. Your money is ready to pick it up in almost no time at all. Why not put an end to any nagging money worries you might have? For $25 on up to $2,000, call GFC at Main 14242. KMOX, KMOX FM, St. Louis, your World Series station. By the way, see the Bob Hope Chrysler Comedy Special on your local NBC TV station tomorrow night. Bob Gibson will be working to mantle Howard and Pepitone here in the top of the fourth inning. There's been no score. Phil, when you get that fast runner on, I know as a catcher what it can do to you. How about as an infielder? Do you find yourself looking at the fast runner too long? You do, Joe, because uh, you've got to keep your eye on him, and especially with a fellow like White up there who can hit to all fields. You don't want to leave your position too soon. And yet with a runner like Brock, if you don't leave too soon, you might not get to second base in time. Mickey Mantle, who struck out his first time up, leads off here in the top of the fourth. Bob Gibson into the windup. His pitch fouled down the left field line out of play. And that time Mantle went with the pitch. Gibson, as we told you, has been pitching away from him. Pretty tough for Mickey to pull that type pitch. Flood real deep in center field. Gibson's pitch is a check swing and it's strike two. He held up, but the ball was over the plate. Nothing in two. A two-strike pitch outside, ball one. Now Gibson is ready. A check swing ground ball right back to the box. Gibson has it. Throws to Bill White, and Mantle is out of there. Mantle trying to hold up on his swing, and Gibson crossed him up that time. He came inside with a fastball. Mickey looking for it away. Stepped right into that pitch. Here's Elston Howard. Ellie single to left field, getting the first Yankee base hit in this ball game. That was in the second inning. Yankees loaded the bases in the second, but failed to score. How it swings and fouls the first pitch back strike one, and it nicks Frank Sicori around the left ankle. Surprised they haven't come up with bigger shin guards for the umpires to wear. They wear those little ones that look like the regular shin guards after taxes or something. <laughs> Got a lot of spots where they can get hit with those, Joe. The one strike pitch foul back out of play. That ball really bounced around in the upper deck. Everybody trying to get out of the way of that one. On deck, Joe Pepitone. One out, nobody on. Two strikes on Howard. Gibson's pitch is a little high. Ball one. Now he's ready. Ground ball. Uh, Gibson couldn't get it. The second baseman, Maxville, there. Throws to first. He's got him. Gibson leaped for that ball. Just missed grabbing it. But Maxville got over in a hurry. It's two out. 
Here's Pepitone, who fouled out to third base in the second inning. And there goes the Pepitone chorus. <laughs> Just think he hasn't played her all year. Just think how many fans he's making me play her all year. <laughs> All right, Joe digging in at the plate as Gibson gets ready. His pitch is fouled back out of play. On to- Here is a bulletin from NBC News. British United Press reports Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev has resigned as Premier and as head of the party. Leonid Brezhnev has been named First Secretary and Alexei Kosygin has been named new Soviet premier. This has been a bulletin from NBC News. Hands and out of play. Up to this point, Gibson has not given uh, the left-hand hitters anything that they could pull with any power. Nothing in two on Pepitone. The windup. The pitch is hit off the fist. The second baseman, Dale Maxville, is right there. He's got it. Three up and three down. And now at the middle of the fourth inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Cardinals nothing. For the Cardinals, in the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Ken Boyer, Dick Grote, and Tim McCarver facing Mel Stottlemyre. Boyer struck out swinging his first time up. Nothing but goose eggs up on the scoreboard. First pitch to Boyer. Lined right back through the middle. Base hit. And Stottlemyre could not get his glove down in time. He tried to, but it was by him, and it just missed hitting him off the right knee. A bullet back through the mound. And now the hits are even at three apiece. The batter is Dick Grote, who bounced to first base in the second inning. Lenz and Richardson having quite a conversation, Phil. Uh, if you were playing short, who would be covering? Well, I see Lenz pointing to himself to cover, but I would let that second baseman have as much room in right field as he would want because Grote, as you know, can take that ball and almost throw it out there. So the shortstop must cover in a spot like this. Even though he's a right-hand hitter. Even though he's a right-hand batter. All right, Boyle leads away. The stretch. Pitch to Grote. He takes it low and inside, ball one. Kenny Boyle, who can also run for a big man at first base. Pepitone holding him on. Go over there. Boyer has to dive back head first. Boyer measures his lead. Uh, He's got a very efficient way of doing it. He gets a body's length and an arm away. So if he just falls, his fingertips will grab the bag. A body's length and an arm away. And that's just what he did, Joe. He fell back into first base. All right, another quick throw, and this time Boyer jumps back just ahead of Pepitone's tag. And as you can see, as Joe told you, this Grote who can handle that bat, Yogi Berra, got Stottlemyre in the hole, infield and outfield alert. You don't know what he's going to do. The pitch, he takes it low inside ball two. Two or nothing. And this makes it rough on a pitcher, too, because he's got to not actually quick pitch, but try and get rid of that ball to not give that runner an extra jump at first base. And if you're a hit-and-run man, you wouldn't want a better spot than two balls and no strikes. Mm, that nice. pitcher's got to be around that plate. So Boyer's got the good speed. they got the good combine going. All right, let's see what develops. Boyer leads away. Stottlemyre sets. He doesn't go, and the ball is taken. It's ball three, and Howard turns around to talk to Sikori. It's ball three. Dick Grote has a good eye and 
can hit and run any time in uh, any given situation. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. No score. Kenny Boyer at first. The stretch. The pitch is taken. Low ball four. And the Cardinals really have a threat going now with runners at first and second. Nobody out, and the batter, Tim McCarver, and the Yankee bullpen gets hot. Roland Sheldon, a right-hander, and Al Downing, a left-hander, are up down there. Howard out to the mound to talk with Stottlemyre. McCarver walked in the second inning. Grote at first, Ken Boyer at second. And now McCarver steps back. As Vern Benson whistles into him from the coaching box at third, flashes some signs. Pepitone in front of the bag at first. Boyer even with the bag at third. The stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch, swing, and a foul tip, strike one. So the Cardinals not going for the sacrifice, at least not on that first pitch. And once in a while, they let him swing for one strike, Joe. All right, McCarver steps back. Now Boyer moves in a little bit at third base. Linz trying to hold Kenny Boyer close to second, shaded over that way. The stretch. The pitch, swing, ground ball. Pepitone's got it. Goes to Linz for one, back to Stottlemyre. Wild throw, and a run is going to score. A run scores, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. On a hard hit ground ball, Pepitone took a base hit away from McCarver. Fired to Linz, but Stottlemyre late getting over to first base, trying to keep his foot on the bag and backhand that ball. It got by him as Stottlemyre fell to the ground. The run scored, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. So that'll be a fourth play for McCarver, and we'll see who gets the error. If they give it to Linz, it'll be a tough play for Linz to get the error. And Linz is charged with the error. McCarver is at first with one out. Grote was forced at second base. So the play goes, a forced play, from three to six, and give Linz an error. McCarver did not advance to second, and here is Mike Shannon struck out his first time up. Pitch to Shannon, a curve, a strike one called. Bobby Richardson was the man backing up that play. Uh, Phil had kept McCarver from uh, getting the extra base. That's right. Bobby came from nowhere. Feel of that uh, carom off the wall. So the cards break the ice here in this deciding game of the World Series. Only one out. McCarver leads away. The stretch. The pitch. Line to right center field. A base hit. There goes McCarver around second. Man in love with it. His throw comes in at second base. And the Cardinals have runners at first and third. The batter is Dal Maxville. Remember we had a situation like this with Maxville up there and they attempted a squeeze play. Howard going out to Stottlemyre, just a quick visit. And I'm sure that's one of the things he reminds him of because the worst thing you could get out of it would be second and third and two outs with a chance for your pitcher at least to come up. That's right, Joe. They attempted it here, and he fouled off the pitch the last time. All right, runners at first and third. One out, the cards lead, one to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Runners lead away, the stretch. The pitch, the runner goes, the swing and the miss, the throw to second base will not be in time. The runner coming to the plate, the throw not in time. The double steal works. The Cardinals pull a double steal and score a run. And I want to tell you that was beautifully executed as McCarver got two-thirds of the way to second base and hesitated for a fraction of a second. At third base, Tim McCarver hesitated until Howard threw to second. Howard's throw was a little high towards the first base side of the bag, and Richardson could not get anything on the throw, 
The Cardinals pull a double steal and they lead two to nothing. With Shannon at second and a count of one strike on Dal Maxwell. He swung at that pitch. The curve is long away and Shannon had a good jump that time. Looked like he might be going, Joe. So you a fine piece of running because uh, Howard had stopped McCarver at third base. And that's what you have to do is he stopped him dead then through the second. And it was not a, a real hard throw because he wanted to make sure McCarver stopped but McCarver timed it perfectly and scored easily. With Shannon at second and a count of one strike on Dal Maxwell. He swung at that pitch. The curve is long away, and Shannon had a good jump that time. Looked like he might be going, Joe. So you a fine piece of running because uh, Howard had stopped McCarver at third base, and that's what you have to do. Is he stopped him dead then through the second, and it was not a, a real hard throw because he wanted to make sure McCarver stopped, but McCarver timed it perfectly and scored easily. The pitch line away, right field, a base hit. Mickey Mantle up with it. They're sending Shannon in to throw to the plate. Not in time, he scores, and Maxwell goes to second base. Holy cow, these Cardinals are red hot right now. KMOX, KMOX FM, St. Louis. Dal Maxwell rifled a single to right field. And Vern Benson gave Shannon the green light, and Mantle's throw was just offline. It pulled Howard towards the dugout, away from home plate. Had the throw been right over the plate, Shannon would have been a dead duck. But Howard had to reach to his right for the play, and Shannon slid across the plate just as Howard went to tag him. Maxwell went to second on the throw to the plate. The batter is Bob Gibson. The Cardinals lead 3 to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Boy, that Maxwell's taking a big lead at second base. The Cardinals this inning have really been running. He didn't even hesitate on that throw coming in, Phil. He was going 40 miles in a 30-mile zone, boy. I guess you couldn't have stopped him if you wanted it, Joe. All right, here's the stretch. Pitch to Gibson, a curve, low and away, ball one. So in this inning, Ken Boyer has scored, Tim McCarver has scored, and Mike Shannon has scored. And the unusual thing is that only one run has been batted in of the three scored by the Cardinals. Pitch to Gibson. Ground ball foul outside of third. He checks his bat. He hit it right off the end, and I believe he split it. Yes, he did. Walking bat for another bat. A 1-1 count. And, of course, all through this series, the Yankees have realized that the running speed of the Cardinals would upset their defense but not so much as it has done in this seventh and final game of the World Series. All right, Wild, a 1-1 count on Gibson. Maxwell with a big lead at second base. Here's the stretch. The pitch is a curve, popped up. Joe Pepitone at first base is under it, near the foul line, and just in fair territory makes the catch. So that's the second out here in the bottom of the fourth. And it brings up Kurt Flood. Flood has been up twice and both times bounced to third base. Maxville at second. Cards picking up three big runs here in the bottom of the fourth. Mel Stottlemyre ready. His pitch, ground ball to second base. Richardson's there. Fires to first in time for the out. But three big runs for the Cardinals. And now, at the end of the fourth inning, the score is the Cardinals three, the Yankees nothing. And by the way, all three runs scored that inning by the Cardinals are considered earned by the official scorers. Even though there was an error, a throwing error by the Yankees shortstop Phil Lins. The runs are all earned. Tommy Tresh will lead it off for the Yankees. Tommy lined a single to left field in the second inning. And now the Yankees really with their backs to the wall, trailing 3 to nothing here in the top of the fifth, the seventh and deciding game of the 1964 World Series. 
Bob Gibson into the windup. His curve hit foul outside of first down the right field line. Al Downing, who is loosening up. Going back to retrieve that ball, but a fan gets it ahead of him. Mel Stottlemyre is scheduled to be the third hitter this inning. So Yogi might be going for a pinch hitter. Downing continues to throw. Pitch to Tresh. He starts to bunt, takes it outside. One and one. Gibson just missed that corner. That was a good spot to throw that curve with Tresh attempting a bunt. Tommy likes to be running the first base when he lays down the bunt. Checks his swing. It's low ball two. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Strike two and Gibson almost fell down as he delivered that pitch. And I tell you, that's a little disconcerting to the hitter. When he sees that Gibson lift that big foot, come down, and then almost fall... But he doesn't. Sure-footed out on the mound. Shakes off two signs. Now he's ready. The 2-2 pitch. Curve a little bit high. He had Tresh fool on the pitch, but it was just above the letters. Three and two. Now the payoff pitch. Foul tip back to the screen. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out and nobody on. In the top of the fifth inning, the cards lead three to nothing. Gibson into the windup. His curve is outside, ball four, and there's the first walk given up by Bob Gibson in the ball game. And it brings up Cleet Boyer. Boyer reached on an error in the second inning. His hard ground ball in the hole couldn't be handled by Dick Roth. Bill White comes over to hold the bag against Tresh. Nobody out in the on-deck circle as yet. Stottlemyre scheduled to be the next batter. Pitch to Boyer. Curve swing and a miss. Strike one. Gibson sets, delivers, it's on the outside corner, strike two call. Frank Sicori taking a good look at these balls and strikes, making no snap decisions. And now Bill White moves in back of Tresh at first. The two-strike pitcher curve popped in the air to short left center field. Brock coming in, Flood coming in. Brock calls, Flood calls, and Flood makes the catch. The senior umpire, rather the senior center fielder on the Cardinals came up with that one. That could have been trouble. And now let's see who comes out of the Yankee dugout. And it looks like young Mike Hegan. That's who it is, Mike Hegan, who got into this World Series, as Joe told you, because of uh, the injury to Tony Kubek. Hegan was put on the active list to participate in the World Series. The son of the Yankee bullpen coach, Jim Hegan, who was quite a catcher in his day for the Cleveland Indians. Here's a stretch. Pitch to Hegan, taken low and away, ball one. Right hand already, his pitch is outside, ball two, two and nothing. This is the third game in which young Mike Hegan is appearing. He's been at bat once without a base hit. Struck out his only time at bat. Bats him left-handed, holds that bat right down to the end. The pitch is over the outside corner, strike call, two and one. 
Joe, these good pitchers, when they get behind, they don't ease up. No, sir. It just rears back and seems to throw harder. Gibson called for a new ball. The Cardinals leading three to nothing. Top of the fifth inning, one out. Tommy Tresh, who walked at first base. The stretch, the pitch, swing, and a miss, strike two. And after a low fastball down around the knees. Again, the pitch, it's a little bit high, and it's a full count, three and two. Tommy Tresh checks Frank Crescetti in the coaching box at third. Bill White moves in now to uh, hold Tresh close at first. Gibson ready for the payoff pitch. Here it is. It's low and inside, and he walked him. And that's the second walk given up by Gibson. Both of them here in the top of the fifth inning. And the battle will be Phil Lynn. Lynn's bounced the third and beat out an infield single. One man out. And we're going to have some action in the Cardinal bullpen. Roger Craig, a right-hander, gets up. Tresh at second. Hegan at first. One out. Gibson sets. His pitch is lying to right center field and coming in fast. Shannon... He makes the play, the throw to second. He got him a double play, a great play by Mike Shannon. Took a base hit away from Phil Lins and turned it into a double play. Holy cow, that Shannon can fly. And the score now is the Cardinals three, the Yankees nothing. The first half of the game was brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation. The second half is being brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Well, Gibson's fine pitching, the Cardinals' speed of foot, and a great defensive play by Mike Shannon. That's big news here. And big news in shaving today is this Gillette World Series special. It's your opportunity to stock up on sensational Gillette stainless steel blades at a bargain price. Choose six blade dispensers. That's 12 Gillette stainless steel blades for just $1.50. You get weeks and weeks of clean, easy shaves, incomparable shaves, and you save 28 cents in the bargain. You're guaranteed the best first shave of your life, plus more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade, or your money back from Gillette. Discover the remarkable uniform quality Gillette can promise you, blade after blade. Get the Gillette special today. Twelve stainless steel blades for only $1.50. Supreme shaving luxury, and you save 28 cents.
This copyrighted recording is licensed by Major League Baseball. Any reproduction or other commercial use of this recording in whole or part is prohibited. And I mean to tell you, I just about lost my voice on that great defensive play by Mike Shannon in right field. And now, uh, happily to carry you along the rest of the ball game, Joe Garagiola. Thank you very much, Phil. Tremendous play on both ends. Dick Grote uh, made a fine play as he caught the hurry throw of Mike Shannon as it took a short hop. He held on to it. Fine play. Al Downing is a new Yankee pitcher. Three to nothing. That's the score. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Lou Brock, Bill White, and Ken Boyer. Mike Shannon took a base hit away from Lenz and then flipped it to second base. The throw skipped in. Grote able to come up with it. A big double play. That ended that fifth inning. Downing is a Yankee pitcher. A good fastball. An overhanded curveball. He throws his slider. Lou Brock will lead it off in the bottom of the fifth. Brock tried to beat out a bunt in the first. He singled the center in the third. Boyer comes in close at third base. It's Al Downing. The new Yankee pitcher is ready, and here's the pitch. Swung on, deep in the right center field. Back, back, that ball is a home run. home run onto the pavilion roof in right center field. So it's a 4 to nothing ball game. Here is Bill White. Swung on, line drive, center field. That's the base hit. Roger Maris is up. White stops at first, and on two pitches, the Cardinals have hit two shots of Al Downing. And the Yankee bullpen swings into action now. Elston Howard out to the mound to slow the pace down just a little bit. As Lou Brock Hit a home run. White lines the single to center, and Sheldon is the Yankee pitcher down in the bullpen. Joe, both those pitches were high fastballs, too. High fastballs, and they jumped on him and really sent him right on out of here. One a home run, one a single. Boyer, he began it all in that fourth inning when the Redbirds picked up three runs. He singled in the center field. Big, powerful right-hand hitter. The pitch. High and inside. It's ball one. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. One run is in. Four to nothing. Bottom of the fifth. St. Louis leading. The seventh game of this 1964 World Series. Bill White leads off the pitch. Swung on. Line drive. Right field. Mail going over fast. He can't get it. One hop off the wall. Up with the ball is Mail. White is rounding third. They're going to hold him up as Boyer goes into second. The throw comes in. Over Howard's head, down and boots the ball, but White cannot come on in. The throw by Richardson, the relay man, was over the head of Elston Howard, down and very alertly backing up the play. He booted the ball, but not far enough to allow Bill White to come on in. With nobody out, Vern Benson doesn't uh, want to take any chances and run the Cardinals out of an inning, so he put up the red light for Bill White, who stopped at third. Boyer's on at second base, and the hitter is Dick Roach. A double for Boyer. Here comes Yogi Bear out of the Yankee dugout. Roland Sheldon is warming up for New York. Downing has really been greeted by the Cardinals. Lou Brock hit the first pitch for a home run onto the roof in right center field. White then hit a hard single in the center field. Boyer doubled a one hop. Line drive up against that wall in right center field. And now Yogi will make a pitching change here. And Sheldon, a right-hander, will be brought in. And while Sheldon comes in out of the bullpen, we pause 30 seconds for station identification. Now Community Federal, the largest federally chartered savings and loan association in the state of Missouri, has branches that are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
There are the 5,000 mailboxes. They make it convenient and easy for you to earn 4.5% on your insured savings. You'll find 5,000 mailboxes in the St. Louis area standing ready for your savings deposit to Community Federal. Start today to earn 4.5% at your savings and loan association, Community Federal. KMOX, KMOX FM, St. Louis, your World Series station. Roland Sheldon, the third Yankee pitcher used by manager Yogi Berra as the Cardinal, who scored three runs in the fourth inning, have scored one run here on a home run, have base runners in second and third, nobody out, and Pete Mickelson begins to loosen up for the Yankees down in the bullpen. Joe, you know you've been wondering how long can they silence these big bats of Bill White and Ken Boyer. And they waited a long time, but they're sure booming them today. Really some hard shots. White's two base hits. Double the center and this single. Both hit right on the nose. Boyer has two base hits. Brock, a big home run. Sheldon, a big, tall right-hander. the second game that Sheldon is appearing in. The infield comes in for the New York Yankees. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning, four to nothing. That's the score. St. Louis is out in front. Bill White is at third base. Ken Boyer is at second base. Dick Grote is the hitter. They shade Grote in the outfield towards right center field. Not too deep. Mal nor Maris. Sheldon, the right-hander. Now Lins drops back. Here's a pitch to Grode. Swung on and missed at strike one. A foul tip, says Frank Sicori. Boyer is in on the grass at third base. Lins is back a couple steps at shortstop. Richardson and Pepitone are in. One strike. They count on Dick Grode. White leads off third. Ken Boyer leads off second. 4 nothing. New York leading. The pitch. Swung on a foul tip. And a strike two. That was an overhanded curveball. Sheldon came from right on over the top. Two strikes to count on Dick Grote. Grote bounced out and walked. Tough man to strike out. Sheldon and Elston Howard know this, working carefully. White's at third. Boyer is at second. There's nobody out. Sheldon ready. Here's the pitch now. Pushes him back with a high tight fastball. And it's one ball and two strikes. Here is a special report from NBC News. NBC's Joseph Harsh in London reports strong indications from the Russian embassy in Paris that Premier Khrushchev did resign. The official list of Soviet Union leaders released today in Moscow does not have the name of Nikita Khrushchev on it. Moscow still has not confirmed the naming of Leonid Brezhnev as first secretary and Alexei Kosygin as premier. This has been a special report from NBC News. Stay tuned to your NBC News station for further reports. Further reports will be heard on KMOX from our KMOX newsroom and the CBS radio network as they develop. Here's the pitch now. Swung on and fouled off again. Bounces around. A battle between Sheldon and Grote. One ball and two strikes to count. St. Louis four, New York nothing. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Bill White at third base. Ken Boyer is at second base. Grote Waves that bat. Sheldon looks down for that sign. Taking plenty of time. Checks the runners. Here's the one-two pitch to Grote. Swung on. A foul ball out of play down the right field corner. Grote just trying to get a piece of that ball. Waiting until the last possible minute. At third base, he's edging up. Ground ball to Lins. He'll be coming in. 
Rins is back. Richardson, Pepitone, and Boyer at third. All in for the play at the plate. Sheldon ready. The pitch to Grote. Swung on a bouncing ball up the middle. Here comes White. Richardson's play will be at first base. In time. Grote is out, but White scores. Bobby Richardson on a slow hit ball. Took a look at the plate. White had a good lead. Able to score. Richardson made the play to first base. In time to get Grote. Boyer takes third. It's a five to nothing ball game now. And a hitter is Tim McCarver. Grote gets a run batted in. The scoreboard man, he's given him two runs up there. Wonder who he's rooting for, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no question, Joe. McCarver waits the pitch. Swung on. Bouncing ball. Foul down at first baseline. And Pete Mickelson in the Yankee bullpen comes up with it. One strike to count. Five nothing. St. Louis leading. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. This is Joe Garagiola with Phil Rizzuto. The seventh game of the 1964 World Series. Both these clubs really battling. They battled all year long to get into a World Series. Now it's the seventh game, and right now St. Louis leads five to nothing. Infield in. Boyer a good lead at third. Sheldon ready. McCarver waits. The pitch. Outside. One ball, one strike. Cleet Boyer broke on over to third base as if there were a pickoff play. And big brother Ken says something to him. He'll probably tell him a little more when he gets him home tonight. One ball and one strike. On Tim McCarver, who has been a real hot hitter for the Cardinals throughout this series. Sheldon Reddy, the 1-1 pitch to McCarver. Outside, and it's ball two. Two balls and one strike, one man out. Two runs are in, 5 nothing. St. Louis leading. Yankee in, feel in. And they want to choke that run off at the plate. Waves that bat. Two balls, one strike, one out. Sheldon, the big right-hander, ready. Here's the pitch. It's a strike of fastball. Off that outside corner, and it's two balls and two strikes. Frank Sicori, the plate umpire, calls time now. Downing came in to relieve. And the starter, Stottlemyre. A home run by Brock, single by White, a double by Boyer, and Sheldon has come on. McCarver waits. Two balls, two strikes. Sheldon delivers. Swung on, a little loop for right field. Mayo's going to make the catch. Boyer tags up. Here he comes. Here comes the throw. It is not in time. McCarver on a sacrifice fly. Drives in Ken Boyer from third base. And the Cardinals now lead six to nothing. So there are two outs, and here is Mike Shannon. It was a race between Mantle and Boyer. Boyer able to score on the sacrifice fly hit to Mickey Mantle by McCarver. Shannon waits. Foul ball, third base side. Cleet Boyer over, but it's out of play. One strike to count. Cardinals with three runs in the fourth, three in the fifth. Speed has really paid off for St. Louis today. Sheldon ready. Here's the pitch to Shannon. Tapped foul. Strike two. Two strikes. The count on Mike Shannon. Shannon was out on strikes in the second. He singled. And scored in the fourth. 
He was the back man on that double steal. And Carver was the front man. Sheldon ready now. Shannon waits the pitch. High fastball. Mike went down to one knee. One ball, two strikes. Shannon's a very aggressive hitter. Once he starts that bat, his whole body goes into action. Nothing it waits. Six nothing. St. Louis out in front of the Yankees. Bottom half of the fifth inning. The one. Sheldon started to pitch and then backed off. He gets a new sign from Elston Howard. Now here is a one two pitch. He struck him out. A breaking ball. Shannon out on strikes. And the score is St. Louis six and New York nothing. Men, wouldn't you like to start the day with the best shave in the world? The quickest, easiest shave a man can get? Here's how. All you need is hot water. Lots of it. Then the shaving cream that supersaturates your beard throughout your shave. Extra rich Gillette Foamy. America's only leading shaving cream that cleanses your skin with K34 hexachlorophene antiseptic while you shave. And to look sharp and feel sharp, use the Gillette stainless steel blade. Gillette guarantees you the best first shave of your life and more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other. Or your money back from Gillette. Clean, close shaves, blade after blade after blade. And for a perfect ending, Gillette's crisp new sun-up. Smells better, feels better. Splash on a dash, and you put on a happy face. Matchless shaving comfort from Gillette. The people who know men best. KMOX, KMOX FM, St. Louis. And we pause 30 seconds for station identification. When it comes to borrowing money from GFC, it really is just as easy as it sounds. All you do is call GFC's friendly Bob Adams at Main 14242. Friendly Bob arranges your loan right on the phone in minutes. If you're a working man or woman, get from $25 on up to $2,000 that fast and easy way. Why fret over money problems a minute longer? Call Main 14242, GFC, and talk to friendly Bob Adams. KMOX, KMOX FM, St. Louis, your World Series station. The top of the sixth inning, Bobby Richardson against Bob Gibson. The lights are on here at Bush Stadium. Gibson ready, delivers. Inside, and it's ball one. One ball, no strikes. Big right-hander ready, delivers. Inside, and it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. The bullpen starts to stir. Bob Euchre, the catcher, hustles from the dugout down to the bullpen. Here's the 2 nothing pitch. And it's ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Bob Gibson leading 6 to nothing. Here is the pitch to Bobby Richardson. It's a strike, a fastball. Three balls, one strike. 3-1 pitch by Gibson. And strike two. Ron Taylor, a right-hander, starts to limber up. Craig was up a minute ago. Now Ron Taylor. Both managers will use everybody. Here is the 3-2 pitch to Richardson. Swung on. Bouncy ball down the third baseline. A real tough play for Boyer. Up the throw is not in time. Ken Boyer, a real tough play as Bobby Richardson topped the ball. A little slow dribbler. Boyer was back with a two-strike count on him. And Bobby Richardson has himself an infield hit. And that's 12 base hits for Richardson in this series. And here is Roger Maris. Six to nothing to score. Top of the sixth, St. Louis leading. Joe, that ties a World Series record. Most hits in a World Series. Here's the pitch to Maris. It's a strike on the outside corner. Bobby Richardson, World Series record. Maris waits. Gibson delivers. It's a strike called on the outside corner as Bob Gibson continues to hit the outside corner, keeping that ball away from these left-hand hitters. The fence here in St. Louis, down the right field line, 310 feet. 
322, 354 in right center. So it's a very nice target for the left-handed pull hitter. Here's a two-strike pitch to Maris. Did he swing? No, says Frank Sicori. A half swing. A real tough play for any umpire, but especially so in the seventh game of the World Series. Boy, you got to go for these umpires. The pressure is tough on the ball players, but how about those guys that have to call the plays and call the pitches? Here's a one-two pitch now. Swung on and fouled straight back. Craig and Taylor warming up for St. Louis. Cardinals six. Yankees nothing. Top of the sixth inning. Bobby Richardson on at first base. Bill White playing behind the runner. Here's the pitch by Gibson. Foul tip straight back again. The umpires are Frank Sicori behind the plate, Bill McKinley, the American League, at first, Ken Burkhart, National League, is at second, Hank Soar of the American League is at third, right field Al Smith, the American League, and left field Vinny Smith of the National League. One ball, two strikes. Maris waits, the pitch, a curveball, hangs high, and it evens out at two balls and two strikes. Richardson, a lead off first base. Maris waving that bat. The pitch. Swung on, a bouncing ball. Pass Bill White in the right field. Up with the ball is Shannon. Richardson makes the turn but holds on. As Mike Shannon with a tremendous arm. Cocked that arm to throw. But I tell you, he's put out enough commercials during this series to let you know he can throw. So it's base runners now at first and second, and Mickey Mantle is the hitter. Johnny Keene, the Cardinal manager, pacing in the dugout. They have a right-hander, Roger Craig, a right-hander, Ron Taylor, warming up down in the bullpen. Mantle was out on strikes, and he bounced out. Richardson off second, Maris off first. The pitch by Gibson swung on and fouled back, and Mantle had a good cut. St. Louis, six. New York, nothing. We're in the top of the sixth. Richardson leading off the second base. Roger Maris, a couple steps off first base. Mickey Mantle in that batter's box, right down the end of that bat. Gibson delivers. Swung on. Hit deep in the left field. Back goes Brock. Back, back, back. That ball's a home run over the 379-foot marker in deep left center field. Driving in Richardson and Maris. Mantle comes in to score. It's now a 6-3 ball game. Man, he didn't swing hard at all at that ball, Phil. Just seemed to lay his bat out there. Just like he did yesterday, Joe, when he went to the opposite field, batting right-handed, hit one up on the roof. And we all know Mickey's got tremendous power to any field. And as we said earlier, Gibson had been pitching him away, so he's been going with the pitch. And that's exactly what he did. He went with the fastball outside, and he has just cut the Cardinal lead in half. Johnny Keene is out on the mound talking to Bob Gibson. He's got two right-handers warming up, Craig and Ron Taylor. Keene is going to let Bob Gibson in the ball game. Johnny Keene, manager of the Cardinals. Been in baseball many, many years, but I'm sure he won't forget this year. A long, long time. Here is Elston Howard now, and Bob Gibson delivers. Swung on and missed. Boy, he let out a notch. If Keene told him to cut it loose, that's just what Gibson did. Foul tip and a strike two. Two strikes, no balls to count. Elston Howard, the hitter. Mantle has a new record. You can hear the announcements in the background. It seems like every time Mantle shows up at the ballpark in the World Series, it's a new record, and he's breaking Yogi Berra's records. Here's the two-strike pitch. High. Ball one. And I'm sure, Phil, that Yogi don't mind that at all. Not at all, as long as they score those runs, Joe. 
One ball, two strikes. Elston Howard, the hitter. Six to three is the score. Top of the six. The pitch by Gibson. Foul tip. Hit that off the end of the bat. The slider. Gibson does not change speeds too often. It was a hard slider, a good fastball, a hard curve. One ball and two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Three runs are in. 6-3. Cardinals leading top of the sixth. The pitch. Fastball. Out on strikes. Caught that outside corner. Elston Howard out on strikes. And it brings up Joe Pepitone. Pepitone fouled out and popped out. He's 0 for 2. And they play Pepitone deep. They shade him towards right field. Gibson gets his sign. Ready. The pitch. Hot shot. Foul down that first baseline. Down into the Yankee bullpen. Ralph Terry loosening up for the Yankees. Craig and Taylor continue to throw for the Cardinals. Gibson ready. The pitch. Fastball. Right on the thumbs. A little looper to Maxwell. Joe Pepitone hit that right on the fist. A little pop fly to Del Maxwell at second base. So there are two outs, and here is Tom Tresh. Gibson has been able to keep that ball in tight on Pepitone. He just saw that bat right off in his hands. Tresh waits. Fastball. He had a good cut and fouls it back. Gibson doesn't waste any time. He gets that ball, he throws it, and of course that fastball don't waste any time getting up there either. One strike to count. The pitch. High. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Tresh shortened up as if he was going to bunt. Maxwell is back at second base. Boyer wide of the bag. Groat shading towards the bag at shortstop. The outfield playing Tresh to pull. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball. Outside, and it's 2-1. Two, two balls, one strike, two outs. A three-run homer by Mantle has made the score 6-3. to three. St. Louis out in front. In the top of the sixth inning. Gibson ready. 2-1 pitch. Curveball, foul tip, and it evens out at two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Tom Trash is the hitter. Waves at bat. Weighty. Gibson shakes off the sign with his glove. Another one. Ready. Here's the 2 2 pitch. High. Ball three. A curveball. Steve Hamilton gets up to join Ralph Terry in the Yankee bullpen. Three balls and two strikes. Gibson ready. The pitch. Swung on and foul back. Out of play. McCarver rubs up that baseball. Bob Gibson. Hard thrown right hander. Ready. Here is the 3 2 pitch to Tresh. It's high ball four. He walked him. So Tresh draws a base on balls. It brings up Cleet Boyer. That's a third base on balls given up by Gibson. He gave up two in the fifth inning. Six to three, that's the score. St. Louis out in front. Tresh leading off first. And Cleet Boyer in that batter's box. The pitch. Swung on and foul straight back. Strike one. Two outs. Cardinals scored three runs in the fourth, three in the fifth. The Yankees scored three here in this inning. Big blast by Mickey Mantle. Here's the pitch to Boyer. Swung on and fouled back again. Two strikes. 
Gibson not letting up. Two strikes. Cleet Boyer waves at bat. Tresh leads off first. White holding Tresh close at first base. Bob Gibson delivers. Misses outside. That's one ball. Two strikes. Boy, you can hear that ball popping at McCarver's glove. Gibson, who looks fast, sounds fast. Shakes off a couple signs. Ready now. Nope. Wants a new one. Shakes off another one. One ball, two strikes to count. Boyer waits. The pitch. Swung on and fouled back. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Base runner at first, Tom Tresh. Three runs in. Six threes to score. St. Louis out in front. They play Boyer straight away. Flood directly in line with the bag in center field. Gibson. Ready now. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on and foul back. Gibson and Boyer having quite a battle. Gibson, when he shakes off that many times, as he's been doing, trying to get Boyer maybe to think a little bit as to what he's going to throw him. A lot of times he'll put down a sign, he'll shake you around and come back to the original sign. One ball and two strikes. Cleet Boyer. Waiting. Gibson ready. Checks the base runner, Tresh. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed it. Struck him out. A fastball. The score is St. Louis 6 and New York 3. You know, it's been a long time since we've seen anything like the Cardinals' speed of foot on those bases and in the field. You know, it's a long time since we've seen a deal like the Gillette World Series Special. When you buy the Gillette Adjustable Razor Set, which also contains a dispenser of stainless steel blades, you get new Gillette Sun-Up Aftershave free in a generous sample bottle. Splash on a dash, and you put on a happy face. Smells better, feels better. Top off every Gillette shave with crisp, refreshing Sun-Up. And what smooth shaves they are with the Gillette Adjustable. It's the razor with the micrometer dial. Nine blade settings. Select the one which matches your skin and beard exactly. And Gillette guarantees its incomparable stainless steel blade will give you the best first shave of your life and more superbly comfortable shaves per blade than with any other blade or your money back from Gillette. There's the deal. Adjustable razor, Gillette stainless steel blades for $1.50 plus sun-up free. Sixth inning. That scoreboard man is really rooting. He's in the bottom of the seventh. <laughs> I tell you, he's a little excited out there. It's been a long time since they've had a World Series here in St. Louis. And that scoreboard man, he's on fast time. Check my scorecard and check the scoreboard, but it's the bottom of the sixth. And here is Dell Maxville to lead it off. Strike. Sheldon against Maxville. The pitch. Swings a foul tip. And a strike two. As you look at the scoreboard, the Yankees have not scored in the seventh, and we're only playing the bottom of the sixth. Here's the two-strike pitch. A fastball that gets him. Sheldon, with a good fastball, gets Maxville. And Bob Gibson comes up. He'll get a nice hand. Gibson, flying to center field. He popped up. One out, nobody on. Roland Sheldon, ready. Here's the pitch. 
High fly ball. Left field. Tresh going over. Maris going over. Who's going to make the play? They almost collide. They do. And Tom Tresh takes the ball out of the glove as Gibson hit that ball right to the warning track. A high fly ball. Maris could have made the play. Tresh did make the play. And there are two outs. And Kurt Flood is the hitter. Flood will take a lot of time to give Bob Gibson a chance to get back to that bench. A lot of things a leadoff man has to do, Phil. He has to take strikes. He has to kind of stall. It is pretty tough, and sometimes those umpires don't like it too much, but you've got to look out for your pitcher. Flood has just reached home plate. St. Louis 6, New York 3, bottom of the 6th. Sheldon ready. Here's the pitch. Fastball, he takes a strike. You can almost bet he'd have to take at least one strike with Gibson hitting the first pitch. Sheldon ready. Swung on and tapped foul. Flood has a very quick bat. He waits until the last minute and he flies in action right now. Two strikes to count. St. Louis, six. New York, three. Bottom of the sixth. Nobody on. Sheldon, the big right-hander, ready. Here's the pitch. Outside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. They play flood pretty much straight away. Sheldon, ready. The pitch. Swung on, line drive foul. Out of play, down and to the right field corner, right over the bullpen. One ball and two strikes to count. Frank Sicori, the whisk broom. Two outs. Sheldon gets a sign from his catcher. Ready. Delivers. High. Two balls and two strikes. Whenever you catch a foul tip, you're just lucky. There's no way in the world you can practice that play. It just happens to hit in your glove and sticks. Flood holds that bat long. Waits. 2-2 two, two pitch now. Outside, and it's ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Real battle going on. This is it. The season is really opening today. Everything down to this seventh game. And right now, in the bottom of the sixth, St. Louis leading by three. Six to three. Sheldon ready. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Kurt Flood. Swung on, line drive, right field. Mickey Mantle digging. He is there, makes the play. Mantle, a nice play as Flood line hard to right. And the score is St. Louis six and New York three. Hector Lopez will be the pinch hitter for Sheldon. Steve Hamilton, a left-hander, continues to throw hard in the bullpen. Lopez, a right-handed hitter. Top of the seventh inning, this is Joe Garagiola with Phil Rizzuto. Seventh game of the World Series. Lopez, the pinch hitter. Strike one. Lopez, been in two ball games, with the bat once, didn't get a hit. Hits a lot towards right center field and the right field line. The pitch by Gibson. Swung on. Strike two. Cardinal outfielders give you the right field corner. They'll play from the 322 marker over towards the flagpole. Two strikes to count. Gibson delivers. Bounces in front of the plate. And I mean he put some extra on that curveball. She came up there like a snake. Sikori wants to look at that ball. I don't blame him. Might explode right in his hand. Bob Gibson continuing to throw hard. Roger Craig warming up. One two pitch outside. Two and two. Ray Sadecki joins Roger Craig down in the Cardinal bullpen. Both managers, they'll use everybody they can get in. Two two pitch. 
Lopez throws his bat, almost hits Gibson as he strikes out. Gibson, <laughs> he had to jump to get out of the way as that bat went sailing out towards the mound. That's six strikeouts for Bob Gibson as Lopez goes down. Here is Phil Lenz. Lenz, one for three. Gibson delivers. Fly ball, right field. Mike Shannon near the line. Calling for the ball. Makes the play. And there are two outs. Two outs, nobody on. Bobby Richardson, the hitter. Richardson with 12 base hits. He beat out an infield hit. Came on around the score, along with Roger Maris, when Mickey Mantle hit his tremendous home run into the left center field bleachers. Gibson delivers. It's a strike. Boys, I don't know about that short rest or long rest. He is really pumping that ball. Since Johnny Keane went out and talked to him, Joe, he's grown even hotter. Swung on, base hit, center field, and Richardson has himself another base hit. Up with the ball is Flood. Richardson stops at first with a single. Thirteen base hits. Thirteen for 31. Here is Roger Maris. Six to three, that's the score. Top of the seventh. Jim Gleason calls time. They want to look at the ball. No, Joe, what they want to do is give Richardson that ball, I believe. It's a new World Series record. Huh? I think. Sikori's looking at it. The Pepitone yelling there. Yeah, that's what they want. Boy, they want to give the ball to Richardson. That's what they want to do, because he just broke a World Series record that stood for a long, long time. Well, Bobby Richardson has himself quite a souvenir. See, you're just used to records, Phil. I'm not. I mean, any time I asked for the ball, I had a tough time to get the umpire to look at it. That's what it was. Remember one time Ed Bailey stole second base. The ground crew gave him the bag. That's real devotion. Here's a pitch to Maris. Swung on, line drive, right field. Shannon over. He's there. Makes the play. That ball was hit hard, but Shannon was there. As Maris lines hard to Shannon in right field. That ends the inning, and the score is St. Louis 6, New York 3. To look and feel sharp, use the stainless blade that outsells all the others made. Get 12 blades while the price is low. It's a special from Gillette. Let's go. Here's the deal. Two dispensers of sensational Gillette stainless steel blades. Twelve blades for only $1.50. You save 28 cents. If you haven't enjoyed the matchless comfort of this great blade, here's your chance to find out why the Gillette stainless has become the number one seller by far. You're guaranteed the easiest first shave, plus more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade, or your money back from Gillette. So right now, save 28 cents on this two-dispenser deal and enjoy real shaving luxury at a bargain. Get 12 blades while the price is low. It's a special from Gillette. Let's go. We will be back on side two to continue the game. Here is a special report from NBC News. 
NBC's United Nations correspondent Pauline Frederick reports that the leading Swedish newspaper in Stockholm confirms the resignation of Premier Khrushchev. The newspaper, quoting its Moscow correspondent, reports that Communist Party theoretician Mikhail Suslov was behind the move to oust Khrushchev. NBC's Miss Frederick also reports that the Swedish correspondent says the ouster of Khrushchev was done more in sorrow because of his age than in anger. The Soviet government still has not confirmed Khrushchev's resignation. This has been a special report from NBC News. Stay tuned to your NBC stations for later developments. The new Yankee pitcher will be Steve Hamilton, big, tall left-hander. Hamilton used mostly in relief all year by Yogi. And Lou Bach. Bach greeted Downing with a home run. The first pitch made by Downing in relief. And Bach hit the big shot off the roof in right field. That was back in the fifth inning. So now it's Hamilton, a left-hander, against Brock. Hamilton ready. Brock waits. The pitch. Shortens up as if the bunt takes it outside, and it's ball one. And boy, you're in close. This Brock, tremendous speed and good power. Boy, you can't beat that combination. They play you in, you hit it hard, they play you back, you bunt. Here's the pitch. Holds up and it goes outside. It's two balls, no strikes. Bottom half of the seventh inning, St. Louis six, New York three. Boyer still in close at third base. Two balls, no strikes. Hamilton waits the pitch. Swings and misses in a strike one. Two balls, one strike. Brock taking a little bit of time. He's got a bad wrist. He's just going to kind of wait a little bit before he gets back in there. Seems like that wrist may be giving him some trouble. Ready now. Two balls, one strike. Sadeki continues to throw in the Cardinal bullpen. Mickelson throws in the Yankee bullpen. Brock still taking plenty of time. Back in and out and back in now. Hamilton ready. Here's the pitch to Brock. Sidearm. It's a strike. Two balls and two strikes. When that Hamilton comes sidearm, he is really tough on those left-hand hitters. Good big guy. Six foot seven. An arm looks like it's about ten feet eight. Here he comes. Two-two pitch. Sidearm. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Boy, it's tough to hang in there when he's sidearm you. And exaggerate as much as Hamilton does. Here is Bill White. Bill is two for three. And White double the center field and single the center field. Six three. St. Louis leading bottom of the seventh. The pitch. White bunts. Foul. She rolls over near the Yankee dugout in front of American League President Joe Cronin. Not all he needs, huh? Phil, is a baseball? <laughs> yeah. And the National League wanted that. <laughs> One strike, they count. Bill White waiting. Hamilton gets his sign. Here's the pitch. Curveball stays inside, and it's one ball and one strike. Vern Benson coaching at third base. Joe Schultz coaching at first base. Hamilton, the 1-1 pitch, sidearm, swung on, popped up straight back. Elston Howard looking for it. It's near the screen. He does not have a play. One ball, two strikes. Bill White. One ball, two strikes they count. The score, St. Louis six, New York three, bottom of the seventh. Mickelson continues to throw in the Yankee bullpen. Here's the pitch by Hamilton. It's a strike call, and White is out on strikes. So Hamilton, the two left-hand hitters, 
two strikeouts as he really sidearms him. And here is Ken Boyer. Boyer is single in the fourth. He doubled in the fifth. He has scored two runs. Big, powerful right-hand hitter. This guy, the leader on this ball club. He wants to move the umpire at second base. Ken Burkhardt. Here's the pitch. It's low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Burkhardt now moving towards left center. Hamilton delivers. It's a strike call over the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Hamilton in and out. Nobody on, two outs, six to three. St. Louis out in front, bottom of the seventh. Here's the pitch. Curveball outside, two balls and one strike. And play Boyer straight away. Maris in center field right in line with the bag. Hamilton shakes off the sign. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Ken Boyer. Swung on, deep in the left field. That ball is gone. Home run. Scoreboard for St. Louis. It's now a 7 to 3 score, bottom of the seventh inning. And here is Dick Grote. Hamilton got two outs by strikeouts, and Boyer, with a count of two balls and one strike, hit one into the left field bleachers. Grote takes it low, and it's ball one. Looks like it was a low curveball that Boyer hit. He just reached out. It's 351 down the left field line. Two outs, one run in, nobody on. Here's the pitch. Hot shot. Boyer, a nice play at third base. He's got it over to first in time. A one-handed grab. He took a base hit away from him. That ends the inning, and the score is St. Louis 7 and New York 3. Mickey Mantle, top half of the eighth inning. St. Louis Cardinals 7, New York Yankees 3. Bob Gibson. The pitch. Swung on. Missed strike one. Might have fouled tipped it. Sikori checks that baseball. Bob Gibson gets the sign from his young catcher, Tim McCarver. The pitch. Fastball. It misses. One ball and one strike to count. And Bill White says something to Bob Gibson to settle him down. And Bob Gibson fires that ball. The Cardinal bullpen gets up again. Sadecki and Craig. Here is the 1-1 pitch to Mantle. Swung on. High fly ball. Center field. Kurt Flood has got the beat on it. Waiting. Taps the glove. One out. This crowd with every pitch, with every out, building up <laughs> to what they hope will be a cardinal victory. The last World Championship Club, 1946. Right here in this ballpark, the Cardinals beat the Boston Red Sox. Elston Howard, the hitter, one out, nobody on, the pitch, outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Howard with one base hit waits the pitch. Swung on and foul back. One ball and one strike. One ball, one strike, one out. St. Louis seven. The New York Yankees three. Gibson delivers. Howard swings and fouls it off. One ball and two strikes.
Bob Gibson takes, takes a look at his defense. They're shading Howard towards right center field, which is kind of a tip-off on the stuff that Gibson still has. There's a fastball swung on and Misty struck him out. And this crowd roaring with every pitch, with every out. And that brings up Joe Pepitone. Bob Gibson has struck out seven men. He leads by four. Top of the eighth, St. Louis seven. New York three. Pepitone waits, Gibson delivers. Swung on and missed strike one. Needless to say, you can almost tell the action by the crowd reaction. Bob Gibson getting the sign. A cool customer. He's ready. Delivers. Foul back. Strike two. Two strikes to count. Gibson quickly out in front of Joe Pepitone. McCarver indicating that there are two outs. Gibson way out in front of Joe Pepitone with a count of two strikes. Gibson ready. The pitch. Way outside. McCarver knocks that ball down. One ball and two strikes. Pepitone waves that bat. Gibson ready. The one-two pitch. On the way. Swung on. Fly ball. Road is going out. Maxwell is going out. Flood in center field is coming in. Maxwell and Flood, but Maxwell makes the play. At the very last minute, Maxwell makes the play to end the inning. And the score is St. Louis 7 and New York 3. The Cardinals have been in four previous seven-game series and won all four of them. You don't know yet if history will repeat today, but I do know this. If you take advantage of this Gillette World Series special, you'll get the easiest, quickest shares in the world, and you'll save 28 cents in the deal. For just $1.50, you get 12 sensational Gillette stainless steel blades. Man, that's weeks and weeks of clean, close shaves. Unparalleled shaving luxury. Gillette guarantees the best first shave of your life, and more just like it for a blade than with any other blade. Are your money back from Gillette. Find out for yourself why it's America's number one seller by far. Unmatched uniformity, blade after blade, dispenser after dispenser. Twelve Gillette stainless steel blades for only $1.50. You save 28 cents. Don't let this Gillette World Series special get by. since 1946 and they're ready to explode McCarver he walked hit into a force play a sacrifice fly Hamilton the left hander delivers McCarver swings and misses and it's strike one as the big left hander really side armed him This Hamilton, tough on the left-hand hitter. Boy, when he comes sidearm, that front leg just starts talking like, let's get out of here. Here's a pitch, sidearm. This one's outside, and it's one ball and one strike. Boyer wide of the bag at third base. Richardson at second base is back. So is Pepitone. Lins at shortstop shades towards the bag. St. Louis 7, New York 3, bottom of the eighth. Curveball misses, and it's ball two. Two balls and one strike. Two balls, one strike. McCarver waiting. Hamilton ready. Here's the pitch. Sidearm. Ball three. Three balls and one strike. 
Hamilton missed that outside corner. Carver checked with his coach, Vern Benson, ready now. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball. It is a foul ball on the first baseline. Pepitone up with that ball. So the count, three balls and two strikes on the leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the eighth inning, Tim McCarver. St. Louis 7, New York 3. Down the bullpen, Pete Mickelson. Starts to throw once again. Hamilton, ready. Here's the 3-2 pitch to McCarver. Swung on and fouled back. He just did get a piece of it as Hamilton had him fooled on a curveball. McCarver just did ticket. Hamilton rubs up that baseball now. Three balls, two strikes. Big left-hander taking plenty of time. Ready. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on. A foul tip as he just did get it. Got Elston Howard on the arm. McCarver hanging tough. Trying to hold in. Hamilton trying to make McCarver give ground. McCarver able to get a piece of it. Stays alive. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Another pitch by Hamilton. Swung on and popped up. Straight back. Elston Howard coming back near the stands. Does he have room? He reaches over and can't hold on. Elston Howard, a great effort as he went into the equipment of a public address man here at the ballpark. Elston Howard, a great effort. On a foul ball hit by McCarver. Guarantee you, Elston played that as well as you can play a ball. Chairs and scorecards went flying. So McCarver stays alive. Three balls and two strikes. Hamilton and McCarver in a real battle here. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Ready once again. The payoff pitch. Swung on, a bouncing ball, Pepitone to his right, knocks the ball down, the throw is not in time. Pepitone, four to his right, knocks it down, flipped to Hamilton, not in time, and McCarver has himself another base hit. McCarver is 11 for 22, an even 500. Walked in the second, sacrificed flying the fifth, hit into a force play in the fourth. So he's officially one for two, 11 for 22. Here is Mike Shannon. Seven for 23, make it on McCarver. Inside, it's ball one. McCarver leading off first. Hamilton at the belt. Shannon waits. The pitch. Swung on. A bouncing ball to Boyer third. He fumbles the ball and there's no play. Everybody is safe. Boyer fumbled the ball. It's an error on Cleet Boyer. McCarver's at second. Shannon's at first and Maxville is the hitter. So with base runners at first and second... Maxwell up there. Boyer, of course, will be looking for a bunt. Pepitone is looking for a bunt. Boyer can't leave too soon. McCarver, a good runner at second. Hamilton at the belt. They're sneaking in. Maxwell's going to bunt. Bunts it down a third base line. A beauty. Boyer has to make his play to first base to Richardson, advancing McCarver and Shannon. Hamilton broke off the mound towards the third base line, but Maxwell punted the ball hard enough to get it by Hamilton. And the hand that you hear is for Bob Gibson, a standing ovation. Yogi Berra has come out of the Yankee dugout, and he's going to make a pitching change. He wants Pete Mickelson, the right-hander, the sinker ball right-hander, to come in and replace his left-hander, Steve Hamilton. A fine bunt by Maxville has moved McCarver on over to third. Shannon 
on over to second. There's one out. And now Pete Mickelson is coming in. Second and third, one out. And Gibson, the hitter. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, St. Louis out in front by the score of 7-3. to three. And Bob Gibson's the hitter. Appreciates him coming back with short rest. And he's gone eight innings so far. Takes a look down at his third base coach, Vern Benson. There is one out. McCarver's the base runner at third. Shannon at second. The infield is drawn in tight. The Yankees cannot afford to give up any runs. Mickelson will pitch off the stretch to keep an eye on McCarver. Gibson can handle that bat. Mickelson at the belt. Here's the pitch. Swung on. It deep a foul. Man, he got around on a fastball. And he hit it on the roof over everything, way out in front. Gibson trying to get at least a fly ball. Pull one foul and strike one. Infield in. There's one out. Seven to three. That's the score. St. Louis is out in front. Bottom of the eighth. Mickelson taking plenty of time. Ready. He delivers. Swung on and fouled out of play. Once again, it's strike two on Bob Gibson. Mickelson wants a new baseball. He can't afford the luxury of the fly ball. He's got to go for the strikeout. Two strike count on Bob Gibson. One out. Base runners at second and third. Bottom of the eighth inning. The seventh game of the 1964 World Series. Gibson waving that bat. Mickelson gets his sign from Howard. McCarver leads off third. Shannon off second. Mickelson ready now at the belt. Checks the runners. The pitch to Gibson. Swung on a bouncing ball. Boyer third has it. They got McCarver hung up to Howard. Howard runs him back now. Flip. The ball gets away as it hits the runner. Now they got Shannon trapped. McCarver starts for the plate. It's Mickelson who's got McCarver trapped again. He runs it back, throws to the shortstop lens, and they finally get him with Shannon going back into second base. Gibson in the first base. The throw hit McCarver. It bounded away from uh, Boyer, but Shannon was there. When he headed back for second base, they had Shannon caught between second and third. McCarver saw this. He headed back towards the plate, and Mickelson very alertly backing off the play was at home plate. They threw, they had McCarver caught, and finally tagged him out at third base. Play went from Boyer to Howard, back to Boyer. Lenz, Mickelson. And Lenz at third base finally made the put out. So we got two outs. At second base, it's Shannon. At first base, is Bob Gibson. The hitter is Kurt Flood. Line drive right at Cleet Boyer. Ball was well hit, but Boyer had him well played. That ends the inning. So the score is St. Louis 7 and New York 3. How many deodorants do you have cluttering up the family medicine chest? Did you know there is a personal deodorant that's perfect for the whole family? America's number one deodorant, Gillette Right Guard Power Spray. It's the perfect personal deodorant because nothing touches you but the spray itself. Not a gummy roll-on, not a messy cream, but a refreshing mist that dries on contact. Two seconds gives you 24-hour protection. Remember, because nothing touches you but the spray itself, Right Guard is the perfect personal deodorant for the whole family. And talk about incomparable products. How about that Gillette stainless steel blade? Gillette guarantees you the best first shave and more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other or your money back from Gillette. Discover the remarkable uniformity of Gillette stainless steel blades. You'll see why the Gillette stainless has become the number one seller by far. Let's 
<laughs> Tom Trace to lead it off. Top of the ninth inning. Bob Gibson has completed his warm-up tosses. Down in the bullpen, Sadecki and Craig start to loosen up. The pitch to Trash is a strike call. One strike. Trash batting left-handed against Gibson. Top of the ninth. St. Louis, seven. New York, three. Gibson delivers. All tip, strike two, and listen to this crowd. Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the top of the ninth inning, seventh game of the 1964 World Series. Bob Gibson taking plenty of time, a two-strike count on Tom Tresh. Gibson ready, the pitch. Swung on, a foul tip. He caught it and knocked the ball, glove off McCarver, and he still held the ball. Bill, I've never seen that play before. Well, that's two he's pulled today, touching home plate for a fourth play, and knocked the glove off and caught it barehanded. McCarver's glove came off, and he still held the ball. So there is one out. Now it's Cleet Boyer. Eight strikeouts for Gibson. This World Series has had everything. The pitch by Gibson. Outside, ball one. Been fine pitching, fine fielding plays, great clutch hitting, great defensive plays all over. One ball and one strike. Johnny Blanchett is in the on deck circle for New York. Gibson ready, the 1 1 pitch to Boyer. One on and miss strike two. This ballpark, needless to say, is bulging at the seams. Every strike, you can hear the roar. Bob Gibson getting a sign from his young catcher. The pitch. Low and outside. Two balls and two strikes. It's a fastball. Hit the dirt, and you can see the dust fly up. Gibson letting out. Sadecki and Craig warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. Two balls, two strikes. Gibson ready. The pitch. Foul back. Count remains at two and two. St. Louis seven. New York three. Top of the ninth. One out. And Carver rubbing up that baseball. The baseball season down to two outs. Bob Gibson, a big, deep breath. Ready. The 2-2 pitch to Cleet Boyer. Line drive down the left field line. It is curving foul. A foul ball by <laughs> Boyer. That ball was hit right on the nose. Curved foul. And a count remains at two balls and two strikes. Bob Gibson shakes off the sign. Gets a new one. Ready now. Cleet Boyer waits. The 2-2 pitch on the way. High and inside. Moves him back, and it's ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Johnny Blanchard swinging a couple bats in the on-deck circle. St. Louis, seven. The New York Yankees, three. Bob Gibson. Ready. Here's the payoff pitch to Cleet Boyer. Swung on. Fly ball deep to left field. Lou Brock is going back near the warning track. That ball is out of here. A home run for Cleet Boyer as he hit a 3-2 fastball. So it's now a 7-4 ball game. Cleet Boyer on a 3-2 fastball has just hit a home run into the left field bleachers. And now Johnny Blanchard will come up as a pinch hitter. Blanchard, the pinch hitter for Pete Mickelson. Blanchard, a left-handed pull hitter. That's the second home run for the Yankees. Mickey Mantle, a three-run homer. Boyer has just hit one. Brock and Ken Boyer have hit home runs for St. Louis. 
One man out. One run is in. Here is the pitch by Gibson. Swung on and fouled back. Strike one. Seven to four. Top of the ninth. St. Louis out in front. Gibson has gone all the way. Ready. Blanchard waits. Outside. One ball, one strike. Outfield deep, pulled around towards right. Infield is back. Maxville just about on the edge of the grass. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on. A foul tip and a strike two. One ball, two strikes. There's one out, one run is in. Seven to four. St. Louis is out in front. Top of the ninth inning. Seventh game. This is it. Gibson ready. The pitch. Curveball. Just did get a piece of it. Looked like Blanchard might have been fooled, but not enough that he couldn't get that bat out there to just get a piece of it. So he stays alive at one ball, two strikes. Time is called now as the left field umpire, Vinnie Smith, wants the spectators to stay in the bleachers in left field. Everything's set now, ready to go. Gibson delivers. Blanchard swings and misses. And there are two outs. Nine strikeouts for Bob Gibson. Gibson in this series has now struck out 31 men. Here is Bill Lins. Fouls one right back here. And it's strike one. There are two outs. St. Louis, seventh. New York, four. Two outs, top of the ninth. Bob Gibson delivers. Lins swings. Fly ball deep to left field. Lou Brock over near the line. Back, back. That ball is a home run for Phil Lins as Vinny Smith gives the sign. So Lins has hit a home run. And it's a 7-5 ball game. And it brings up Bobby Richardson. Two home runs in this inning. Johnny Keene. Hasting in the dugout. You know what's running through his mind. He'd like to see his pitcher get a complete game, but how far can he go? Yankees battling back like they've been battling all year. The Cardinals battling to win this game like they've been battling all year. Two evenly matched ball clubs. Two runs are in. Bobby Richardson, the man who has really been getting the base hits in this series, 13 of them. Time is called now. Once again, the Bleacher fans leaning over the wall. And the announcement is made that the game will be stopped until they get off the wall. Bobby Richardson up there with two outs. Seven to five. He's got to get on to get the big bomber Maris up there to tie and run. Bob Gibson, ready, delivers. It's low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Roger Maris kneeling on the on deck circle with that big bat in his hand, waiting to get up there as Richardson takes a strike. One ball and one strike. This ballpark just bulging. With every pitch, one ball, one strike. Richardson waits. Gibson delivers. Swung on, popped up. Maxwell at second base. Calling for it. Makes the catch. The Cardinals win it. And this ballpark, complete bedlam. The final score is St. Louis 7, New York 5. And in a moment, we will review the highlights of the game for you. Men, would you like the cleanest, quickest, easiest shades in the world? It's really very simple. First, splash on lots of hot water. Really wet those whiskers. And then make them even wetter with moisture-rich Gillette Foamy. Regular or menthol. It's tiny moisture bubbles super saturate your beard. And Gillette Foamy is the only leading shave cream containing K34, hexachlorophene, antiseptic. It cleanses your skin while you shave. 
And now for the easiest first shave of your life, slip an incomparable Gillette stainless steel blade in your Gillette adjustable razor and discover why this blade has become the number one seller by far. Gillette guarantees you more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade or your money back from Gillette. And every shave can have a perfect ending. Splash on a dash of refreshing sun-up aftershave. Smells better, feels better, manlier. Women like it, too. And that's it for real shaving luxury. Foamy, Gillette stainless steel blades, and new sun-up aftershave. Where's your disclaimer? We'll go down to the Cardinal Clubhouse in a few moments, but first let me say that this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Our producer for this World Series has been Ken McGregor. Our engineer in St. Louis, Howard Gunther. This ballpark really bedlam. They've waited since 1946 to have a world's champion. And now the Cardinals, with this victory in the seventh game, beat the Yankees 7-5. to five. The final score here is Bob Gibson with short rest coming back to pitch a complete game. He battled to hold on. The Yankees battle back with two home runs. Bobby Richardson, the hot hitter up there. Roger Maris next, but... A pop fly by Bobby Richardson, caught by Del Maxville, brings the world championship to Bush Stadium here in St. Louis. The crowd still on the field. This ballpark bulging. The excitement, very wild here in St. Louis. A lot of heroes. Bobby Richardson with a new record. Bob Gibson with a new strikeout record. Home runs by Mickey Mantle, by both Boyer brothers. These ball clubs battling all the way. And the Cardinals the winner. And now let's go to the wind up this 1964 World Series broadcast. Let's pick up Harry Carey and some of those victorious Cardinals. Harry, take it over. Here's the young man who pitched this decisive victory. Bob Gibson, congratulations, Robert. Thank you, Harry. I'll bet you won't go out dancing tonight, even though you do celebrate. I don't think so. Not too much dancing. Were you a little tired in the late innings? I didn't get tired at all, Harry. I, I, I just I wanted to go as long as I could. I just, uh, for some reason, I didn't get tired. Are you, are you aware of the fact that you've struck out more men in the World Series now than ever before by anybody, 31? No, I'm not, and uh, that's not really important. Uh, the win is more important. Boy, this is a gay and happy clubhouse right now. It's happy for me, too, Harry. Congratulations on a great performance. Thank you. Thank you very much. I Bob want to Gibson. congratulate you, too, Bob. It was the most marvelous performance I've ever seen. Thank you, Mr. Bush. Thank, Thank you, you, pal. There's the owner of the St. Louis Cardinals, Gussie Bush. No, I'm not the owner. I was at Bush Incorporated. It's the owner. I'm the president, and I'm the happiest guy in the world today. Did you have any idea when you first got into baseball that could bring you these kind of thrills? I should say I did not. Today is the greatest one I ever had in my life. Having attained your goal of a world championship with your interest in baseball less than any. Never in even More all the time. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Gussie Boy. Here is the very happy, very happy uh, president of oh, the National League. Great. We're so proud of the Cardinals representing us in this series. They did a tremendous job. They won the pennant the hard way, and they did a tremendous job in the series. We're just as proud as we can be of them and them in the National League. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Giles, uh, two, uh, two world championships in a row. Oh, it's great. We'll win two or three more in a row, too. Congratulations, sir, on, on a great world series. That was one. Warren Giles, president of the National League. It was Here we go. Uh, Tim McCarver. Tim, get up there. Here's a young man who batted 500 during the World Series, a fine young catcher of the St. Louis Cardinals, Tim McCarver. Thank Tim, thank congratulations. You, thank you, Mr. Bush. Uh, Harry, it's a great, great. I thought the pennant was great, but this is, this is by far the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And Bob Gibson, you talk about a bull, but I'll say the same thing about him that I did after we won the pennant, but that guy really gives you 170 percent. Could you tell any difference in his stuff at the end than at the beginning? No, Harry, uh, they were just 
just, uh, those guys are hitting good pitches. You can't walk a guy in that situation. And uh, uh, like we told Bob, uh, that Bob, you know, you got to make them hit the home run in that situation instead of walking them and then have the big bomb. And, and well, they did hit two home runs, but how'd, they, how'd it come out? That's right. Congratulations, <laughs> Tim. Thank you, Harry. They're dancing in the street in Memphis, Timmy. Hey, Captain Captain Kenny Boyer, the star right, third baseman, congratulations. Thank you, Harry. It's all ours now, man. Hey, uh, you hit two home runs, one of them a grand slammer. Uh, another one here today. Uh, what gave you the biggest thrill? Well, uh, I can never recapture a week ago Sunday, Harry, when we won the print and put us in this, but naturally a grand slam home run's a big one today. It turned out to be a big one because uh, they come up with a couple of home runs tonight. But uh, they're all big thrills. To win the thing is the greatest thing in the world, and especially for the city because of our bicentennial and all, and uh, we're just real happy about it. Kenny, did I see uh, your brother Cleet sort of pat you on the back as you rounded the bases on your home run? Well, he was a little looser today because, as I said, we already had a three-run uh, three lead. So he was a little loose, and um, he said congratulations or something to that effect. And uh, I know that we're all happy this thing's over with. Everybody is physically and mentally exhausted because of the pent-up pressure and, and the series coming out of the seventh game. So everybody deserves a vacation, and uh, we're all looking forward to a winter of rest. Thank you very much. Congratulations again to you. Kenny Boy, Lou Brock, Lou. Lou, step up here. Here's the out. Here we go. The fine shortstop of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, this is the second time around on the World Championship team for you, Dick. Yeah, and they were carbon copies here, and I couldn't be happier. This is the greatest ball club I ever played with. And that's saying a lot because I think that Pittsburgh club in 60 was great, but this club kept battling back all year long. We came from way behind all the way to win it, and I couldn't be happier or proud of it this whole group that I am right now. Dick, you're the first one who sat all the way through this that it reminded you of the 1960 World Series when you were a member of the Pirates against the Yankees, a series which also went seven games. Very well. We were uh, down 2-1 to one in Yankee Stadium. Mr. Giles even mentioned to me before the, the fourth ball game in Yankee Stadium, you've been in this position before, and I said, yes, sir, and this club will bounce just like the Pirates did. Congratulations to you. Thank you. The commissioner of baseball, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frick, come up here, would you? Oh, please, sir, come on. Come on down here. You, you've had such a great World Series. The commissioner of baseball, Mr. Ford Frick, you couldn't paint a picture of a more exciting series, sir. Harry, they're all exciting. I'm just telling Mr. Bush that this is my 42nd series. And by George, you think sometimes you get a little tight fed up with them. Each one is as exciting as the last. Isn't it a shame you can't root for once in your life? Well, that's right, but you still can read down in your heart. A great thing, and to keep sustained interest in baseball from early April to uh, mid-October is a great tribute to the fascination this game has on our people, sir. Oh, there's no question about that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Congratulations. Ford Frick, the commissioner of baseball. Here is left fielder Lou Brock whose tremendous performance enabled the Cardinals to win the pennant and really bang his way in the World Series. Congratulations, Lou. Thank you, Harry. Did you have any idea when you remember the Cubs early this season that this would happen to you? Oh, well, be a ball fan, we always think that you have a chance to win the pennant, but this is something uh, didn't expect it, and I, as I was traded to this ball club, they started to move. I real, feel real great, real proud of myself. Congratulations to you, Lou Brock. Where's Johnny Keane? Johnny Keane. Johnny Keane. Where's Johnny Keane? Hey, Mike, Mike Shannon, come on up here, quickly, please. Mike Shannon, another youngster, only 25 years old, who distinguished himself in the World Series. Mike, hey, you might have made the defensive play today that turned the tide in this ball game on that fine catch of Linz's looper that you turned into a double play. Well, it took a shot of it. looked like it would be a big inning there, you know, for them, because they had men uh, first and second there, and the big guys were coming up next there. Richardson been hitting and Maris and Mano, and uh, the ball hung up. It was tough to see uh, when the ball was up there. Line drive that Maris hit out there, I had trouble seeing that. But the ball did hang up. The ball was carrying real well, and the ball stayed up, so I was able to... I kept running after it. I didn't... Sometimes I saw it, and sometimes I didn't. But I knew it was up there someplace and hanging, so I just... I, I just gave it all I could, and I caught it. A wonderful World Series for you, Mike Shannon. Well, you can see, I, I wish we could get Johnny Keene, but he's way back there surrounded by writers and uh, radio and television men. This is the scene here in the Cardinal Clubhouse. This is Harry Carey. Uh, thanks very much. I hope you fans have enjoyed hearing from these very happy world champions of 1964, the St. Louis Cardinals. Joe Garciola is your Saturday afternoon monitor host this weekend on the NBC Radio Network.